Radio. I'll take the night, I'll take the night. 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 Cause you have a heart that's divine. Deserving you all, girl, you're mine. Eternity's ours, yeah, you're mine. We'll live the life, I'll take the night. Welcome to Take the Night, and I'm your host, Boyd, with co-host D. Shine and Angelica Martinez. And D. won't be with us tonight because it's Friday. He'll be with us Monday, but you have me and Angelica tonight. Welcome back to Take the Night. How you doing, Angelica? I am doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You on time tonight? I'm like, oh, look at Angelica already in the queue. <laughs> <laughs> Normally... Normally, you show up fashionably late just by a little bit. I was like, oh, oh like look a at minute Angelica. or two minutes. Do you yeah. think it's like I'm like 15, 20 minutes later or something like that? I, no, I said by a little bit, just by a little bit. It's not that bad. I'm just saying I was surprised to see you in there. It seems like we haven't been on in forever, or at least it does to, for me, right? It's only been two shows we've missed, but it feels like a little minute, right? Yeah, it, it does, and, you know, it was, it was a big little break, you know, I, I mean, we have talked, you know, in between, um, you know, shows, and, you know, it was definitely needed uh, for, for both of us, you so. Fit, you, you faded out a little bit, just by a little bit. You did something, and then you kind of went in the background. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, you know, it was it was a good little break for for both of us that was both needed, and you know, it wasn't just uh, you and me feeling that. There was a bunch of people, you know, feeling like you know, kind of blah, and like I just need to take some time, you know, for myself, and you know, just kind of, uh, I guess, kind of recharge a little bit, you know, and yeah. just chill. So. You know, it was all good. Yeah, yeah. Some some in me was just to give you guys the the backstory. I was calling Angelica, prob was it last Monday? And I was on the line. I was like, you know, something inside of me saying we should take the night off. And you know, but my mind is telling me to do it because I like doing it. And you know, the mind and what what's going on within are two separate things. And sometimes we get caught in between the two and need to make that distinction of what's really going on in situations like that, which what to tie into a little bit about what we're talking about tonight, at least from my perspective, I tend to jump around a little bit, but mm-hmm. um, I see you've been creating a lot. Yeah, I uh, had yeah I had my pour last night. Uh, you know, I made a couple pyramids, some gems, and you know, uh, a neck piece from my mom, and a couple other things. So yeah, it was it was it was good. You know, and You're getting down. <laughs> I have enjoyed myself, and it's 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 really cool because it's like. You know, I'm just doing my own thing, and, like, to see people, you know, get inspired by what I do and, you know, make comments, like, well, I wish I was on your skill level. I've always been, I've, I just kind of started this, like, you know, I think it was um, maybe June, I want to say maybe June, July last year, you know, um, and to see the progression in myself that, you know, I've I've made is, to me, you know, it excites me because it's like, for me, I'm just getting started. It's like, this is just the beginning for me. You know, now that I got, you know, I guess a good idea of my own style of, you know, doing it, um, you know, it's just even more so, uh, I guess, you know, more so freeing and gives me more confidence to continue to uh, to evolve, you know, so yeah. I'm just excited, and I'm also very thankful for uh, the people that have reached out to me to to do custom pieces for them, because, you know, that's what I do, 
You know, I just don't make things for mass production. You know, most of it is for myself. You know, somebody sees something that I have, it's like, well, let me let me see what it's, you know, if this is something that I'm willing to to part with. Like I made yeah. um, an example is like the the abundance gem that I made. I made a set like uh, last year, I believe, before I left, like in November, and. You know, I was looking, I was like, I want to do this again because I have a better understanding of, you know, how to do it. So I basically refined what I did, and it came out even better. So, you know, I'm going to do um, a kind of like the past and the present so you can see where the first one that I did and then like the new one is totally, you know, different in a way, but the same. You know, because yeah. it's, a, it's an evolution of the first one. And, you know, it's like I did that for me because that's what I want to, to have in my life. You know, I want to bring that uh, type of abundance and, you know, protection and, and love into my life. You know, so, you know, doing that is like if somebody was like, oh, you know, I want one, I'd be like, okay, well, maybe, you know, I, I might be able to part with maybe one or two, you know, but that's it. Because it's like mm-hmm. the extra stuff that I do is for me. It's for my own healing. It's to continue to evolve my trade. That's why it's like I don't like to do um, things the same all the time. Like even when I did, mm-hmm. um, even when I did my root chakra, like the the three quarter pyramids, like I had four different types. Yet they were all you know similar in some ways and then different in others. Um, and to me, it's like I, I I enjoy using, you know, a certain method that rings true to me. You know, and it's like I feel this. This is how it's supposed to be done for this particular thing. And, you know, but I just don't do it all the time to to, to sell them. It's like, no, I have, a, I have a bunch of the root chakra pyramids, and a lot of them I've actually given away. So... You know, it, it's like when they want to go somewhere, they will be like, oh, it will be like, oh, I'm going to send this to this person. I'm going to send this to that person, you know. Um, yeah. And that comes, you know, and that really comes genuinely from my heart, you know. And since we're speaking on, like, you know, finding your heart and, you know, getting back to it and kind of just really aligning yourself with it, it, it really does speak to doing things not to get something out of it, but because, you know, you just want to, you yep. know. And, uh, and yeah. well, not only just because, you know, you don't want to or, you know, uh, a lot of people do things in order to get something, you know. Yeah, they have, they have like, a motive. Yeah, ulterior motive. There's a, there's a motive. And it's like, yeah. yeah, and it's like when you just do something from your heart, you don't want anything in return. You don't expect that. You don't do it in lieu of like, okay, I'm doing this for this person so that in the future, you know, they're going to remember what I did for them. And, mm-hmm. you know, that way they owe me. It's like, no, it's not even, it, it should not be like that. You should just do it because you feel in your heart that it's the right thing to do and you genuinely want to do it, you know, because exactly. if it's coming out of a place that is that, you know, well, I, I'm, I'm going to do this so that in the future I can get something back, you know, later down the line, then you already tainted its purpose. You know, you tainted it with something, you know, a thought, an energy that, you know, later on you're going to want something, you know. Exactly. And, 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 and w- 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 while we're talking about, your, your 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 craft with the organ, um, and Helica made me a dope piece, you guys. And I finally like showed everybody. It's on my Facebook. It's on, you can see pictures yeah, of it on I my Instagram. Yeah, like, <laughs> And it's also it, like, all in, the time. I love it. Yeah, it's it's also in a, like this little video that my sister shot you can see on my YouTube and my YouTube is it's simply Boyd, but yeah, it's pretty cool. And I was like, I have to, I wanted to show it to everybody in a special kind of way. And I told her I was going to show it in a special kind of way and it just happened. And 
yeah, it was cool. I was like, I hope I hope she's not thinking I'm just like not trying to show it or something like that. But I was like, I, I have to make sure it's right. So I had to create like this this you know, this infamous thing where I could show it off. So yeah, it's been a little short little short film type type deal. You guys could see that yeah, on it's simply boy. And you know, I appreciate it and I love it when people, you know, show show them wearing my pieces because it's like that is the purpose it's like that's why I made it and you know I don't expect people to do it all the time but it is very very appreciative because it's like you're not only showing something that is helping you you know and benefiting you but you're also you know letting other people know how to have access to that you know by sharing it and you know a lot of times People don't do that because it's like they don't want anybody else to know or have access. It's like this whole exclusive thing, and you know, it's it's not it's not really like that. It's like I want people to know uh, about what I do because I genuinely want to help people. You know, that's what I enjoy doing. And, and also, you know, if you hoard, mm-hmm. if you hoard, you will no longer receive. You have to free up space mm-hmm. to receive new new wisdom, new things, new whatever, new energy. So you have yeah. to let things go to make room for new things to come. So, And if you're hoarding stuff, you already missed the boat. You know, if you're like, oh, this is only for me, nobody else can know, you, you missed the boat already right. when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, that's why it's like I really appreciate, you know, you and uh Sarah, you know, posting my stuff. It's like, oh my gosh, look at somebody. It's like one of the. It's like if if I were a musician and I heard my song on the radio, I'd be like, oh my god, you know, that's how it feels to me. It's like, oh my god, like somebody is actually, you know, wearing it and saying that, you know, it's from me, and you know, it's saying all this great positive stuff about it. It's like, oh my god, oh my god, you know. Um, I, I, so I hit her up really like I got exciting. a surprise for you. I surprised <laughs> yeah, her, y'all. I, like, I didn't I even like, tell her. Uh... <laughs> I didn't tell her I was going to put it in. No, 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 no. <laughs> and so when I saw it, I was just like, oh my god, I felt like so famous. Like, like, like it was like it was actually a music video, and it's like when people see music videos, you know, in the mainstream, and they're all these, you know, celebrities are wearing a certain outfit and rocking certain jewelry. That's how I felt. It's like, oh, my gosh, this famous person is wearing my stuff. <laughs> and, 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 and it's in their music. You know how many people are going to see this? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You know, and that's yeah. how I feel. And it's like, you know, I feel like, you know, I don't want to say validated, but just like, it's just confirming that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and to see and feel like the, the joy and the energy that not only I'm giving to, to somebody in my pieces, but to see them, you know, actually feel it and want to share that. It's, it's, this is amazing to me, you know? And, um, and like I said, it is, is exciting because it's like now, you know, I have a, like I said, I have a couple more requests for certain things, and it's not even, um, like, I want a certain shape, I want this. A lot of it is just kind of like um, how, you know, I did with the, um, with your piece, with your mom's piece, and Sarah's piece. It's like, oh, just do whatever, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever you feel like it, <laughs> you know? And it's like, it's kind of nerve-wracking because it's like, well, what am I going to do? But then what I usually do is, like, I go to the person's page and I just get a feeling for them and then I go to my little workspace and pick out the stones. Like, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, I'm still in this one, maybe this, maybe that. It looks like this person, you know, is really into these things. So maybe, you know, this. And then I sketch it up and send them the ideas and, you know, it just goes from there. Um, so it's it's really exciting to have that creative freedom, you know, to to express and to really kind of connect to um, other people's energies and to kind of understand uh, what they want to achieve, you know. And 
to understand them, you know, as an individual being because it's like I make these things to help people, you know, heal and balance and align, you know, their energy. So it's like really giddy. It's like you have to get in tune with them. You know, it's like you have to put yourself in their shoes. It's like, what am I needing? And that's why, you know, I ask certain questions to people, you know, that I'm working with. Yeah. Like, what is your, like, what is your intention? What do you want to achieve, you know? And, exactly. you know, I also ask basic questions, like, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite time of the year? You know, what's your favorite fruit? It's like, to other people, it, it may seem like, oh, just general stuff it's like but it says a lot about a person you know it really does and because all those things have their own frequencies and vibrations so mm-hmm. it all means something it all comes together yeah and, and, and if you sit with those things enough you're part of that you're you know you are what you eat you are what you sit with so yeah it mm-hmm. says a lot about a person those things yeah and you know, a lot of the things that people have been, you know, requesting is about love, you know, unconditional love, you know, and that comes from the heart, you know, but first exactly. it comes from you. You have to love yourself unconditionally, you know, in order to love somebody else in that, yeah. on that level, I don't want to say in that, in that, you know, but just on that level, it's like you have to be accepting and you have to be honest with yourself about everything, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, the the happy, and, you know, the awesomeness that you are. It's like it, all of it makes you who you, who makes you who you are. And yeah. to, to kind of, like, deny certain things or not be honest, it's like you're just hurting yourself. Not only are you hurting yourself, but you're putting boundaries on, you know, what you could achieve, you know, what you could, you know, have in a relationship, you know, and a lot of the time, you know, I always, I've always been a person that is like, I'm not going to do something that I wouldn't want my partner to do or upset them, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's like you, and that's like me putting myself in my partner's shoe and be and understanding who they are. It takes, like, a lot of, you know, effort and understanding to really kind of switch yourself to somebody else and be like, how how would, you know, my partner react if I did this? Hmm, well, he's like this, and usually, you know, and, and you know, that's what it really is when it comes to um, unconditional love. It's, like, really accepting and understanding the other person's, you know, feelings and thoughts and not judging, you know, and exactly. and trying to really, you know, help them, you know, help themselves. Because it's like a lot You're of right. times people, a lot of times people get into, into relationships to fix the other person. You know, oh, this, this dude is, you know, oh, he's like a playboy, I'm going to change him. Or this chick is, you know, a, a, a whore, I don't want to say whore, but just like a hoe. You know, I'm going to change her. I'm going to do this. But, it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I said. <laughs> but hey, let's 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 let, let, let's dial it back just a little bit because uh, <laughs> I didn't even say the title. Like for today. Well, so you guys know if you're here, tonight's show is Your Heart, Go Back and Get It. Okay? Go Back and Get It. Talking about the heart. And, and Helica's right in, in everything she said. And we were we were about to do we were supposed to do this show what like twice leading up to tonight and yeah you didn't right it, yeah we're supposed to do it last Friday but we did it and then we're supposed to do it on Monday okay so so if you guys don't know I'm I'm like a backstory kind of person I like to tell backstories so to basically explain how we came into this show it's it's you know I like my life is a magical kind of kind of thing of synchronicities and I like to explain it to people so they can see how things go and how maybe it'll help them look at how things come together in their life in terms of synchronicity so the way the way we came about tonight's show is um you know I I'm um we do some shows on the astro realm and uh you can go back and listen to those we're not going to talk much on that tonight but 
you know, I had this dream and two times I've gone to places in the astral realm and music had been being played there. And I remembered the artist and I came, I woke up and I'm like, okay, I sit with it. And I'm like, okay, so this artist, they're like a fairy or an angelic spirit that projects a certain vibration, a certain narrative of their music. Right. So if we can begin to look at everything in a magical sense, start to look at certain musicians and certain kind of things as what they are. They represent some kind of magical frequency, some kind of vibration, some kind of energy resonance that one can take on or reject either or. Right. So what happens the last time is, you know, once with Celine Dion, which is a heart shocker kind of person. And then the latest was Shaw Day. And I, you know, I'm every, you know, everyone knows these two artists, but I, I don't listen to them all the time. Like, I'm not driving, bumping. Um, sometimes I'll drive and bump Sade, but not so much uh, Celine <laughs> not Dion. Celine. But Celine Dion, Celine Dion's dope, though. Like, I, you know, she's dope. I like, I like the feel of it all. But the point of it all is I knew that I was tapping into uh, something that was going on with the heart that I was supposed to be dealing with and you know, I was going to be getting some kind of messages and relaying these kind of things some kind of way, and it was going to be dealing with the heart. It's obvious because, you know, these two people speak about the heart. So the album I was going to go to when it came to um, Sade was her Soldier of Love album because that's the one that I actually have on my phone. So it just made it easy. You know, I could drive around and play it. And, and matters of the heart, the traumas we deal with, it just it just kind of hardens us, and we 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 say to ourselves, you know, that's never going to happen again. We become a little distance, and we put up these walls and these these shields, and you know, become some may come become a little cold. Um, I want to I want to say a, a little line from one of Sade's songs off of her Soldier of Love because I was like, I knew instantly this was a heart thing that I was supposed to be talking about with myself and then mention it to Angelica and then we were supposed to delve into this kind of stuff on the show. But in her song, Soldier of Love, right, she says, I've lost the use of my heart, but I'm still alive, still looking for the life, the endless pull on the other side. It's a wild, wild west. I'm doing my best. I'm at the borderline of my faith. I'm at the hinder line of my devotion in the front line of this battle of mine, but I'm still alive. So when I sit with something like that, because I'll, I'll sit with things, and I'm like, what was this person going through? And you see, I, music is going to be a big of this thing regarding the heart because music plays a major part in culture, period, right? And when it comes to the development of one's spiritual and intellectual and emotional growth, you know, you have the theme song to your life playing all the time, whether you're in a car or whatever, whatever that may be. But, you know, when when I listen to music and I and I and, and it's an artist that writes, I'm trying to I'm, I'm looking at them. I'm listening to what they're saying. I'm like, OK, what were they going through? What were they coming to terms with when they were writing this? And when you look at this thing, you could tell, like, in these lyrics, it's somebody who it was literally telling you, you know, I've lost the use of my heart. I've been cold. I've, I became cold. Certain things that have happened to me because she says the wild, wild west doing my best. You know, I'm at the borderline. These things that she's gone through have put her in a place to where she's been struggling with her own faith and realizing she's becoming numb to her own heart. But she's still alive, right? Because when most people look at the heart and you say something like get back into the heart, I'm sure somebody somewhere is like, I use my heart all the day. It's beating. You know, I use it all the time. It's beating. But, you know, that's more of a physical representation of the heart. You know, not not the spiritual representation of the heart. Spiritual manifestation and, and symbolic meaning to everything, right? So mm-hmm. after the whole Sade thing, I was like, okay, yeah that's clearly something we need to get into because if you look at culture right now, popular culture, 
you know, if you're if you're just driving in the car listening to the radio or what's hot, you're not going to get too much music that's in the heart frequency today. Not not so much today, depending on what station you listen to, of course. But if you're just somebody that absorbs the mainstream, you're not getting too much heart frequency. So what does that mean? That means you're getting another frequency. So what is that frequency that you're, you're tuning yourself to consciously or unconsciously all the time? Uh, it's going to be more of, a, of a, a surface kind of tune, unless you're somebody that plays, you know, you got some stuff you play. But let's, um, like I said, I'm talking about the people who are just it's taking amazing. things in that don't, yeah, that don't understand the spiritual well, of, representation of the music. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, uh, I mean, I, I can, I'm only speaking from, you know, what I've observed my, my little cousins, they're like 14, 15. And the music they listen to is like, to me is like garbage. It's like, what the heck are they talking about? They're talking about cheating and sleeping with other people and it's okay. And, you know, doing drugs and drinking. It's like, this is all very root based, you know, and, Exactly. It's, it's, it's now very, let's let's build on that. Let's 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 build on when you say root base, what that means. Because you know, some people when they hear you highlight something as if it's not what you're into, they automatically think you're hating. Okay, but that's a physical Whoa. realm perspective. We're we're speaking mm-hmm. from a spiritual perspective here and you know, get a book or something so you can understand. Because if you don't yeah. get it, then you're in the wrong place. But we're going to try to explain it. So just just deal with the deal with it for a little bit and see that if you're if you're if your music isn't promoting a deeper kind of uh, consumption, like a, 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 a direction of thought or feeling reflection, then it's 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 basically an external kind of form of music, which is sitting in that, that root, that base, which is like, I have this, I have that. They look Mm -hmm. that way. This looks that way. It's pointing. Everything's pointing outside pointing. Like, you know, if you're listening, extend your, your arm up and point your pointing finger. That's what it's doing. It's pointing the finger outside. And in this, in this world we're living in, it's an individual internal journey that we're supposed to be dealing with and and you want mm-hmm. success right everybody wants mm-hmm. success and happiness and love like angelica was saying how do we get that you know turn the finger back at yourself and, and that's how it has to happen so dealing with with things like you know your traumas you know some of these heartbreaks and coming to terms with them and realizing where the the, the where the lesson was in it all you're not supposed to walk around putting up a block like some would because if you also know, because some people say, you know, when it comes to spiritual concepts, especially today, people people are always like, oh, I know that, I heard that before, but it's like practicing, right? Or really knowing many ways to look at it. Well, if you know, if you know this, these things already, then you know that you get what you put out. So if you're a person that wants love, or real connections and you're an individual that's walking around with some kind of front up barrier, something to protect you because you've been, you've ha- you felt like your heart has been taken advantage of. You're going to attract that mirror for you. It's going to be another person that's putting up barriers <laughs> that has a front up, and and you guys are both going to be talking on this superficial level and you'll never really get below the surface. Or if you do, you realize, wait a minute, I don't really know this person I'm dealing with. So it's that much more important that we deal with these things and get back into the heart and um, deal with these things and, and just open up and realize that, yeah, you're vulnerable when you're open, but if you've had something that happened to you to make you feel like you needed to protect yourself, you've you've gotten some kind of wisdom out of that experience. So you know you can still be open, but you know how to vet people a little bit more. You don't have to have these barriers up because if you walk with these barriers up, you you attract 
the very Same image thing. of you, right? You know this, right? You, you <clears throat> oh, get yeah. what you put out. Everyone wants to say they know this, right? But yet, <laughs> how do you know this and then still feel hopeless when it comes to finding that right person for you or still having problems with finding that right person for you only because you're not being authentic in yourself when you're going out amongst the world trying to meet these other people. So you're attracting somebody that's basically not being completely honest and forthright with you because you're not being completely honest and forthright with them. It's very simple. Right. It's very simple. Mm-hmm. It's an easy it fix. Means. It's just you really got to deal with some things that may make you feel some kind of way. What were you about and, to say? And, I, I was I was just going to confirm that because this is it's interesting that you're bringing this up because I just had an uh, happen today with a person. This person is no longer my friend because of this issue um, of not being you know honest with themselves, you know, and just wanting to complain and you know, you know, I, I want to say as we've gone um, through certain things with people in our lifetimes, we always have, I don't want to say always, but the majority of people have that friend that just always wants to complain about drama, and it's usually the same drama, and, you know, a lot of the times they're just doing it for attention. It's like, okay, I thought this was resolved, you know, let's move on. It's like, if it keeps on happening, you are not being honest. There's something within you that you are not acknowledging and accepting that keeps the same bull crap happening over and over. And, you know, if you're going to deny that. Let me touch on that. Why why is the same thing happening over and over, Mm -hmm. right? Because Mm -hmm. we as the individual, we have in our being, our energy field, these terms, I hate using these terms because I know that, mm-hmm. you know, everyone's saying the shit now, but it means nothing. And these things are becoming cliches because if if we were really understanding what these things meant collectively, holistically, the world would be, would you be know, people, people's interactions with each other would be a lot better. And people's individual okay. mental states and emotional states would be a lot better. So I try my hardest Mm -hmm. not to use these things because we are not the same when it comes to how I understand these things and how I see other people are understanding. And that's okay. Everyone gets it on their own. But, But it goes back to that's why it's... Now, let me give some more backstory real quick on this because this shit blew me away. You know, when we were off, I was just doing some research and, you know, reading, reading some stuff, watching some lectures, and I stumbled upon this symbol called the Sankofa symbol. If you're, if you're listening to this, write this down, the Sankofa symbol. That's, a, that's S-A-N-K-O-F-A. And they're going to tell you it has two representations, but we only want to focus on one of them. One of them looks like a heart. Of course, it has these little swirls in there. It kind of looks like it could be the top of some kind of, like, brass gate or something like that. But it's this ancient symbol that that is found in some of the tombs in Egypt that predates back a long time ago. And if you know there's nothing new under the sun, which I'm sure everyone likes to say, do you know that the very representation of the heart symbol that we have today has to be rooted back to this Sankofa symbol in some kind of way. And while I've been doing my research, and I, you know, if you look up something like the, the, the origins of the heart symbol, they'll say it ties back to the seed of some kind of plant. But I'm going to use my, you know, we, we got the ancestors with us, right? We got intuition, right? So I'm going to use my intuition, and I'm going to say it stems back to this Sankofa. Kofa symbol, but let me let me let me really explain why I'm going to say this. Because the new under the sun, that means humanity, since the fall from grace, let's say, has struggled with the same issues, meaning traumas. You know, we have things that happen to us that harden us. We feel some kind of way. We have some kind of baggage. We take on these 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 preconceived notions about people. And we become mental, mental beings. And especially in society, society today, everything's measuring of intellect. Not much of one's, um, you know, a spiritual, emotional 
aptitude, just this intellect thing. And if you get caught up in playing the game of intellect, you realize that game is no different than what a robot can do. So what makes you different than a robot if you're basing your, your, your advancement as a being on primarily intellect when a robot damn near mimics intellect perfectly? What is the robot missing that you have? a beating heart, right, a, a soul, right, a chakra system, right? So, so basing ourselves off of being these intellectual kind of thinking beings means nothing, especially when you realize how a lot of people go crazy being trapped in their mind all the time, dealing with all these things in the head. But back to this Sankofa symbol real quick. If you look up Sankofa symbol right now, it'll say Sankofa is a word in uh, the TWI language, I'm not going to butcher that, but whoever's out there that's some kind of master at knowing how to say shit, that's good for you. Say it to yourself. I'm going to just spell it, okay? But moving on to the point, it's from Ghana. Translation is go back and get it. Return to go. Fa to fetch. Now, you know, I don't know the language, but to fetch? I mean, come on here. We got to have some kind of discernment on how to use our common sense and look at this Sankofa symbol and see that the way we have always told each other stories through society and tribes was using symbols because, you know, language, uh, writing started with symbols. And then, you know, we start to have language where the symbols start to lose a lot of their meaning, but we use symbols and when you look at this symbol and you see it looks like a heart, and then you see that the meaning of it means go back and get it, return. When I look at that the way I decode things and use things to my benefit, I'm like, wait a minute, this is telling people to return back to their hearts. Because why? Humans become these mental beings. We, in, in regarding uh, the, the chakra system, we bypass, we end, up, we end up getting thrown out of our hearts through trauma, and, you know, keeping these kind of these all this hardness and this 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 perspective on whatever has done us wrong or and all that kind of stuff, which is true. And we have we have the right. to. But what, how is that serving us on a spiritual evolutionary kind of way as an individual? You know, you can hold on to the things that have happened to you and your 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 raw emotion that's from a negative perspective on things all you want. That's good for you. But as an individual, when it comes to evolving as a spiritual being, there's no way to do that. There's no way to get into the crown of your your system with that, without going through the heart. So you have to go back into the heart and learn how to sit with that before you can you can transcend into your higher spiritual frequencies. And and this symbol says go back and get it. And it looks like a heart. And it says go back and get it. Fatu fetch. Fetch. You know, I'm I don't need to be, know what it means from like, you know, that person that wanna be all deep and break it down and all this like uh, the the you know, the, look, look, let's let's make it black and white here. We make things very complicated sometimes. And if you know that when you look at the heart chakra, it tells you, you can look it up right now. It's the bridge between higher and lower uh, spiritual concepts, meaning it's the bridge between those lower chakras and those higher chakras. Things of the more physical realm and physical nature and external focus, and then things of the more internal nature, the internal focus, enlightened things. So there's no way to get there to that enlightened place without first going through the heart. It's the bridge. So this automatically allows you to know how to also discern, you know, some kind of, you know, wolf in sheep's clothing, somebody that's projecting to you that there's some kind of enlightened individual, but yet you know that everything in their action and their beings is nowhere near rooted from heart, from the heart. And I'm not talking about, you know, because people will get, having heart confused with the spiritual representation of the heart chakra. Like I have the heart of a lion. I will pursue and strive and I can go fight. And that's, that's the physical representation of the heart. I'm talking about the more spiritual representation of the heart 
And if you give me a moment, I'll I'll show you, I'll read some of the attributes of actions rooted from this spiritual place. Love for oneself and others relating to relationships, compassion, empathy, forgiveness, accepting, transformation, change, ability to grieve and reach peace, compassionate, discernment, center of awareness, integration of insights. Now, when I look at this and I put this up to the society we live in today, I notice a lot of problems, um, especially when it comes to compassion. In today's society, you know that the, the heart is that I tapped into the, that heart frequency and I'm supposed to, we're supposed to be talking about this because the people, the heart is nowhere near where our society is from the, the spiritual representation of, yeah, everybody got the heart to speak up and say what they don't like and say what's ugly and talk about somebody that slipped or, or protest. But what does that have to do with compassion? What does that have to do with empathy? What does that have to do with forgiveness? What does that have to do with acceptance? What does that have to do with the ability to grieve and reach peace or to be compassionate? And when you understand that the, the heart is being tapped into from strictly a physical perspective for the most part in today's world, you'll realize why we have a lot of the problems we're having when it comes to little, little crazy kids running around shooting up schools and stuff like that. They, they're, they're clearly just mental. They've had some kind of traumas, right, by way of us not cultivating the youth to be more compassionate, more filled with love, knowing how to be relating to others, knowing how to have forgiveness, knowing how to accept change and how to strive for transformation, the ability to grieve and reach peace only after some kind of mass tragedy, right? That's in terms of today's society, to be compassionate. These things don't even exist. How do we know they don't even exist for the most part in mainstream society? Because it exists nowhere in the mainstream music. So it's going to it's, it's going to mean that it's absent from whatever the popular life, popular culture is, which makes it absent from, remember, out of sight, out of mind, right? Which makes it absent from the spirit and the souls and the consciousness of the youth, which is going to make them more hard and more mental because what happens is, is we go from the lower chakras, those base roots like Angelica was talking about, and then we get we, it, we, we, we want to stand up for ourselves. And what we do is, what people don't understand is what we all have done is we end up bypassing the heart because we felt that pain when we're, we're, we're in tune and we're sensitive. We, we, we don't want to feel that no more. We're like, no, I'm not going, no more there, going there no more. I'm going to put up these fronts. I'm going to put up these barriers. You bypass the heart and you go straight to using your throat chakra and then you use it from that root chakra. So you basically create a detour. Instead of going the bridge that the way, and, you know, from any way you want to look through any way that the system has been decoded to reach spiritual transformation, the heart is the gateway. It's left everywhere. But what we, what we do is, is we buy, since that's a sensitive place for us, we create a detour, go from our root chakras, bypass the heart and go straight to vocalizing, go straight to mentalizing. And what happens, there's no compassion there. There's no compassion. There is no empathy. There is no forgiveness. There is no transformation. What's there is logic, logic and intellect, which means most people can make, make sense of why they're right and why, so, why someone else is wrong. But there is no peace made or no common ground made because there is no empathy. You're seeing it strictly from a debating perspective. I'm going to debate. The great debaters, right? We're going to sit here and debate. Let's highlight these great debaters. No part in that from the perspective of empathy, compassion, love for oneself and others, relating to others, just debating. All intellect, all throat chakra, from the perspective of wanting to be right and to prove someone else wrong. So you realize that when you're dealing with things like this, when you're dealing with a society that like ours, that's basically saying, don't go no, we're not going nowhere to the heart because we traumatize each other all the time and no one tells us how to heal these things. You see that a lot of the problems we have 
are basically rooted from the fact that everyone's been thrown out of their own hearts. And when you look at this Sankofa symbol that our ancestors decided to leave behind, it means go back and get it. Now, what I'm saying to you is, is the way I interpret that, when I look at this heart symbol and when you go, you know, when Valentine's Day comes around and everyone's looking at the heart candies and the hearts are everywhere and, and you know, you're buying somebody a gift, are you really in your heart? Let's start asking ourselves this, or are we mentalizing aspects of the heart, just like a damn robot would do? You ever watch Star Trek and see Data trying to feel like a human, trying to go through the motions? He's like, I know humans feel, so I'm trying to do this. That's, that's what we tend to be doing, because if, if, if we were in the heart, it would be more about wanting to, 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 relate to one another in society, accept one another in society, help each other grow in our society, and not just be running around beating up on each other all the time because the kids are going to be a product of that, and then they're going to go around, and you're going to have to fear for yourself from one of them that, you know, feeling some kind of way all in their mind, all mentalizing themselves, and then they go out and they've built up the courage, the, the heart externally to go do something crazy in the world, like, you know, go harm a whole bunch of people strictly because they didn't have a, a way to have anybody tell them or show them the way that, okay, you can deal with these things and learn from these things that have happened and basically become stronger from it all. So, you know, look up the Sankofa symbol and go back and get it, your heart. Like, like Angelica was talking about, uh, People want love, right? If you're, if you're meeting other people with a list of schematics, like, you know, a lot of people have these lists now, and they've been popularized by people in the public eye that have some kind of stature. So people now have lists. He, she must be this way. She must look this way. She must have this. She must have that. Do you, do you think, does that, does that seem like heart to you, the heart? When I just said it's, you know, that, there's no heart in that at all. So, you know, we wonder why our relationships end up so, so, so combative when basically it's a root chakra relationship that's, that's bypassed the heart and can vocalize. Yeah. We're in a relationship where we know when we're, we're not going to put up with that no more, but yet we don't have any compassion for what the other people are going through, but we know we want, but, but yet we can also fix our lips to say something like, you don't, you're not considerate of others. And I've always known that the first person to say you're not considerate of other people, that's the person that's never considerate of other people because they're saying the shit. Most people normally have a problem with others. They, have, they see things in others that they do themselves. And that's, that's just another aspect of the realm being a mirror. Everything's a mirror in this realm. So you get what you put out. And what you don't like in others is something like, like, those people that say you always cutting me off they they always <laughs> cutting people off and you know i'll i'll cut you off i'll cut angelica off while she's talking but i don't mean anything by it and i'll never say you're cutting me off because i'm not meaning anything by it when i do it but that person that says you're cutting me off is a person that has some kind of uh they just want to speak they they and there's nothing wrong with that but they they want to speak more than they want to understand what's going on in the conversation. And then it always happens. Like once one person says it, then it's like a chain reaction. Now you cut me off, but yet you cut me off. And it's like now this thing where we're supposed to be resolving some deeper issue and coming to some kind of bond has turned into some external pissing match about who's cutting each other off, fighting for the, opportunity to speak and, and you lose all ground of any kind of progression in that kind of situation. And there's no aspects of being rooted in the heart shock we're going on in conversations like that. There is no love. There is no compassion. There is no empathy. There is no forgiveness. There is no, no, no patience. There is no transformation. There is no, no, it, it's just simply people trying to mentalize what's going on to get what they want. And it goes back to, what Angelica was saying about 
people wanting that invested interest. Like, you know, you hitting up this girl and you being all kind or to this guy and you, you know, you want to look all good, but it's like, do you have a motive or do you just want to have a real connection? Because intention is everything, right? We know this, right? We like to, you uh-huh. know, cause I'm saying that because every time you tell somebody spiritual principles in today's society, they'd be like, you know, I know a lot of these things, but it's like, okay, good. You know, we, we all know that we should treat people with respect, which has been told to us all as since we were kids. But why is that not the predominant action being displayed in the world? Because few pre- practice what they pre- preach. So it's not a matter of what you know. It's, about, um, it's a matter of building the, the habit with routine and ritual to become what you know. Instead of just being somebody, you see, the realm is built in intellect, which is a whole bunch of people in this age of information absorbing information and just relaying it intellectually in conversations over a glass of wine or at a bar. And, yeah, it's what they know, but it's not necessarily all the time in those realms what they are. You see? You see the difference to be talking from what you are and then to be talking from what you know are completely different things. It's like uh, someone's talking about being, a, you know, like, like a, a person that specializes in talking about cats. It's like, okay, they, they know how to talk about cats, but are, I'd rather be able to speak to a damn cat because the cat's practice, practice talking to you from what it is, not from what it's an intellectualized about a cat. That's what we do in this society. We talk about what we intellectually have come up with more times than we talk about from a place from what we are. And that's when they go back to how they say, does art represent life or does life reflect the art? It's a dual reality. In some cases, it's going to, the art is going to reflect the person's life. But in most cases, since we live in this, this realm where, people don't have self-esteem and confidence to be their own people. Most of the time, the art is prompting all the people to act in the way of the art. So again, is it speaking from what we are or or from what we know, right? Because it doesn't matter what we know. It's like, what, what do we live? Are we living that, you know, are we living that? And that's, that's the point here. In any case, you want a good, you want to meet somebody, you know, you want to meet somebody good for you that understands you because everyone always wants what's best for them out of all relationships, but never considers what's best for, you know, the other person for the most part. They're just, it's just what I need out of it, what I want out of it. So what happens? You attract somebody that's the same damn way. Because the realm tells you that everything is mirroring itself. So if we know these principles, these spiritual principles, you know, because people want to argue, about, argue with you all day about spiritual principles all day and be like, I know, I know. But yet the very things they say in the conversation shows you that they're not in their heart. They're simply an ego and lower chakra speaking from <laughs> the intellect, which is, means they're nowhere near the heart. Nowhere near the heart. Yeah. So, and I mean, you know, <laughs> and you know, I I totally agree with you because it it, it is very true um, that people are out of touch with their heart because they are very much influenced by these outside things that they think that they have no control over, you know, that they're just a part of, um, and then when you actually realize that you are the one constant thing in your life that you actually have control over, then you start to make those changes and that starts, you know, starts you on your healing journey. Um, And it is also very true that, you know, we reflect, you know, our inner conscious and subconscious out into the world. You know, everybody that we encounter that we actually, you know, connect to on, you know, a mental, emotional level, they are a reflection of ourselves. And, you know, 
if somebody's frustrating you or doing something that's triggering something, you know, that is an opportunity to really get into yourself, you know, get into your heart, get into your emotions to try to figure out why you are feeling this way. And, you know, it does go back to certain traumas or experiences that we had um, whether it be this lifetime or past lifetimes that make us, you know, react a certain way or block certain things. And it is very true that um, a lot of people fake it, you know, and, you know, they, they say they want something and, you know, portray this certain thing or put on this certain front, and then when they get it, you know, they realize that that's not what they really wanted because what they were putting out, wasn't genuine. It wasn't really coming from their heart. It was coming from, you know, outside of themselves and what they, you know, projected. Um, and and let's be real. Getting, and let's be real. This this realm is about shiny things most of the time. So like that person, that dude that's like, I want a good girl that's there for me, that loves me, and that woman that says, I want a good man that's there for me and loves me and is with me at all times. It's all good until, you know the shiny things drive by and the, you know, that nice ass come walking by. And then you, what happens? All those higher goals and aspirations that have a more spiritual <laughs> tone to them get, I'm sorry, get I'm... swallowed up and pushed yeah. down into that damn gut and below. And you come back straight to the things that you already have come to terms with to give you more pain and drama and shit. Dude, I'm laughing because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I just had, like, an experience with uh, with a person that this exact thing happened, you know, where they were basically in a relationship or not in a – I don't even know what to call it. They basically have, you know, a child with somebody, always, you know, saying, oh, I really do love her, I care, I wish she was different – so that, you know, it would work out. Sometimes we go through these things, you know, where everything's good for, you know, maybe a week or maybe a month, and then it changes. And then we end up going back to how we were. And then, you know, he he said that he, you know, finally gave up. You know, I don't, I, and, you know, said that he didn't want to do it. And all this, you know, during that time, you know, he found somebody of interest. But yet when the opportunity arose to, you know, sleep with his, you know, ex, he did it. And it's like, wait a minute. I thought that, you know, you didn't want that and you were, you know, building something with somebody else, but then you reverted back. That makes okay, no sense. Okay, see, so, wh- wh- and, so why? And, why? And, and, why? And, 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 and right, right. And so, so, so I, you know, so I, you know, was like, dude, you need to acknowledge the fact that you really want to be with your ex, and you still have feelings, and you need to process all of the shit that you guys have been through for the past, you know, eight plus years, and you know, go from there. Because if you didn't, if you really you know, wanting to move past that and you're feeling this person like you say you are, the physical wouldn't matter. You would have been like, no, I want this this different thing, this thing that I feel that I know is going to be better. It's totally different. And, you know, deny this physicalness. But you didn't. So that speaks a lot about you. And you need to process that internally and what that really means. Get into your feelings and be honest with yourself about what it is that you know, is making you, you know, go back to this person that you say that you don't, you know, want to be with. You know, it's always so you, a, I'm, oh, I do, and then I don't. It's like, dude, you're, you're just confusing yourself. You're not being honest. You're not expressing, you know, anything. So that's why this keeps on happening. And, you know, a lot of times, just I've been there. So a lot of times, yeah. it's not even that deep. It's just more of, you know, when you're a male and you haven't reached a certain spiritual growth inside of yourself, it's a it's right. a physical thing, you know. It takes yeah, time it's, it's, it's to get crazy. to know that new woman who, you know, she see see the male, you know, why do they call the male a dog, right? Just from a, a basic cultural perspective, because he tends to you know swing it around oh, yeah, at yeah, any yeah. given moment, just like a dog and, would. Okay, so and this I, is saying and, and that the male really... is in the lower chakra, right? So 
So if that good, if that woman comes along that has more of a, you know, she's going to make you wait longer and he's feeling all hot and bothered in his own cycle sometimes, it's real easy to go back to the woman or to, not even to go back to her, but just to, you know, that you you know how to get her in the mood. You know that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's going to be there. So it's easy to just get get back into that situation simply out of a physical necessity, which is yeah, why a lot it, of times. No, no, finish. No, I mean it's, it's from from just from a just to keep it real simple yeah, from a, from most of the time. It, that's it, why it happens. Yeah, but and I can totally understand that. You know. And that's why it was like, it was just shocking to me because the way that this person, you know, was adamant about like not wanting to be with her and all this stuff. And it's just like, dude, you are totally denying how you feel. It's like. No, he just want to hit it. He just all you need to say. Like, I just want to hit it and talk to her at the same time. Stop playing games. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, that's the thing. It's like, you don't, you need to just say what you mean. And, and and that's what it is sometimes. But still, it wasn't him being honest. And, you know, the thing is, it's like if you want, if you genuinely want to have, you know, that higher type genuine love, you know, type of relationship, you have to, like you were saying earlier, you have to be vulnerable. You have to be open and, you know, express, you know, what you are feeling from the heart, you know, and understand that those are your feelings and they come from somewhere, you know, and the other person, you know, should be open to hearing them and help you understand, you know, where they are coming from and also understand what they did. And, you know, that way they can grow and learn, you know, like, okay, this triggers this, you know, we're going to work on this. It's something that, you know, they want to work on. So, you know, I'm going to try my best to make them understand that I'm a different person and I'm not going to give them the same result as this other person, you know, and it all comes from that communication, you know, that openness of, you know, being honest with yourself and able to communicate how you feel. And, you know, it is very scary, you know, to, to be honest with somebody else. It's, it, it is even, you know, hard to do it to your, for yourself, you know, and, and expressing, you know, how you are frustrated with, you know, how you get angry at things or why you don't like a certain type of person. And it's like, these, these are growing things. These are things that we have to be honest with ourselves. But, and see, then, but see, the thing is, the thing is, is it makes life way easier when you do open up. Because you know what I always hate? When you watch that damn network TV show and you see that moment when the character, all they have to do is tell what's going on to the other person and it will solve this this drama that's about to unfold, but they, what do they do? They never tell them. Therefore they keep this secret and then they find out later. And then you go through this annoying ass. I hate drama in TV shows because if, if you tell somebody what's going on and why you don't like something, what happens if they care, they'll either, you know, make those adjustments for you and then you don't have to worry about it. But if they don't, if they don't like those adjustments, what what would they do? They will go move on, and then and then your life and their life is easier because you're not compromising in the way in which you don't want to do, and neither are they. But ultimately, you that it makes it that much easier to just say, "Yo, you know, this is why I don't like this. This is why it happened this way." Because what happens is we tend to say it in have that communication issue, it comes out at the wrong time. We let it sit too long, and then when we get angry or we get upset and things have got to this boiling point, then we mention it, and then it comes off wrong. It comes off like you're, like, you know, like it comes out all the way wrong because you didn't think to just have these discussions over time just naturally while you're driving in the car because we jump to the physical aspect of it all and then, you know, when we are having conversations sometimes with some people, it's, it's basically mundane conversations up until somebody has a problem. Then it's an argument rooted in pointing out each other's flaws. None of that shit is good for anybody. 
So, you know, what I learned is if I'm trying to bring up something, I try to do it when tension isn't high. And what happens then is, is if the person around is like, they'll see it as a buzzkill, but they got to understand that it's never the right time to do it when people are already mad to, you know, to express, especially something that you don't like in another person that they're doing, because if they're already heated, then what you, they're going to go into defense mode. It's, 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 that's what's going to happen. So it's, it's timing. You know, we have not, since we're not rhythmic anymore, we don't use like tribal units and sit and beat with each other. And we live in this society where everyone's kind of at their own drum. People's timing in their own individual life is off and how they, when they choose to bring something up to somebody and all that shit's off. Timing is off, completely off. Because it's a matter of timing. It's like, when do you say that thing, you know, that you need to say that's just going to help your relationship? Do you wait till you're already in an argument? Or do you have enough consciousness to say, you know, yeah, we're having a good time. Maybe we can have a, a fucking discussion, like how most people say, like adults, right? You know, instead of mm-hmm. just waiting until you, you're going to be screaming and hollering at each other and stuff like that. But... Yeah, you know, but yeah, ultimately, it, though, ultimately, it goes back to just thinking about what you want others, to, how you want others to treat you, and and making sure just a very simple way to tune yourself to more of your heart is you deal with what's going on with yourself, you become more, you try to be more accepting of other people in mm-hmm. friendships and all that shit. Not everybody going to be like you. <laughs> You know, yeah, and, not and, everybody and, and like you. Yeah, and it's very true. I mean, that also comes with, you know, setting certain boundaries, which is something that we've talked about before. It's like you have to, you know, protect yourself, you know, and sometimes certain relationships and certain e- energies aren't going to be beneficial. Like, you know, if somebody is just constantly, you know, complaining or, you know, you feel so drained afterwards, it's like you're not getting anything from that exchange. You're giving in that exchange and they're not giving in return. So you don't, you know, so it's out of balance. So it's like it's up to you to to understand this and realize this and put certain boundaries on things and, you know, maybe walk away from certain friendships because they are not helping you in your growth. And And that's okay, you know. I mean, I blocked the dude. It's like, it's, it's like he, it's, he went into going into insults, like trying to insult me. I mean, the dude basically said, yeah. oh, I don't know magic. I, like, I don't do magic, so I wouldn't understand. And I'm just, like, sitting here laughing. Like, <laughs> but, but see, but like, see really? just to, so, to and, even say that, to even say yeah, that, to even say that it's, shows it's, you yeah, that he's not into no magic. Yeah, uh, I don't want I see I I'm not going to, to Because say that how can you not, say something like, like when the heart when the heart is the center, what it's called is warlock. There's a difference. The warlock Yeah, and that's what it power, is. Right? And, and that's, that's what that it is. And that's what it is. And it's like I understood this and it's like, you know what? Um I'm just going to not put my energy into it anymore. Because it's, first of all, you're not wanting to grow because you're doing the same crap over that, you know, you you want to understand why, and I'm trying to help you understand why, and you keep on doing the same stuff, you know. So it's like you're not helping yourself, nor are you helping me, because all you're doing is coming to me with, you know, these issues, and that's it. You know, you're not trying to help me, you know, grow in, on any type of level. You're not giving, you know, that positive positiveness back. Like when me and you talk on the phone, you know, I don't feel drained afterwards. You know, I feel very excited and, you know, chill because we exchanged evenly. We gave back and forth. You know, even when I was going through some personal things, you know, it still felt that way. So, and that's really the thing is, like, you know, that's what real friendship is. It's like I don't need to call you all the time, you know, but when I do, I don't feel drained. I don't feel like, oh, my God, I have to take this call or what is this person going to complain about now or what's the problem? You know, it's nothing like that. So 
So that's because I got my own mojo, baby. That's why. You know what it is. You know, I I, I got my own yeah, mojo. It, it, that's what it is. Yeah, and, 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 you know, when you realize this, you know, you start to really – honor your own safety, your own, you know, power, your own energy, because it's like you don't want somebody to just, you know, take it from you and to, you know, drain it from you. So you you, you start to say no, like, no, I'm not going to participate in this, or no, I don't feel like, you know, speaking with you, or I don't, you know, and that's okay. Some people, you know, need that. They feel like if they don't have somebody to talk to or somebody to express to, that they don't have any friends and nobody cares. And it's like you have to put that out as well in order to receive it. So it's like well, I let you know that, that's know, why they like, say if you want somebody to love you, you got to love yourself. Mm-hmm. So if you want friends yeah. that appreciate you, appreciate yourself. It goes back to self-esteem. And the self-esteem mm-hmm. is the issue that we see most going on when you say, you know, why do people stay in toxic relationships? It's because they have a, a vanity-based, an, eternal, an external-based thing that's holding them there, whether it be a good time, a situation that makes them feel comfortable, or anything along the lines of the root chakra or external-based things. And that's why you end up putting yourself in your own suffering by your own vanity. And nobody ever tells somebody that. It goes back to, like, when the devil makes a deal with somebody. What is it, you know, when you hear the stories, what is it? They, they already know what you covet out of life. So as long as a person that wants to take advantage of a person, they know what you covet in life, all they're going to do is give you a whole bunch of that. And while you're focused in dwelling and basking in all of that, they're going to be doing all this other shit behind the scenes to you that you're too blind to see because you're caught up in the things that you covet already. And that's why, you know, you have to realize and go back to the heart and deal with things of a more, you know, seeking love for yourself. Once you do that, then you know when somebody's playing you. You know Uh those friends that don't love you. You know it. You know those friends that that you call friends. You know who they are. You know the ones that don't really love you. But if you, you hit them up because you know you have a good time with them, you know, you know, or you and your lower self and you want to hear some gossip and they, they're good for that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and, oh, you, yeah you know. it's, 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 you know, it's, it's like, I, like I was saying before, sometimes some people don't want to let that go, but you have to understand that when you let that go, like Boyd was saying in the beginning, you make room for other better things that are going to be of benefit to you, you know, and it is very, it's a very beautiful thing. It's like, you know, for myself, I have not, I don't want to say I have not, but I've, because I moved around a lot when I was younger, you know, I, you know, didn't make friends because it's like, well, what's the point? Because I'm just going to be moving. And I know that once I move, you know, and I'm not involved in somebody's everyday you know, like I'm not seeing a person every day, that I'm just going to kind of disappear because that's actually what happens. And that's why, like, these so-called friends that people have, it's like if you, t- if you take yourself out of their lives or don't communicate with them for a certain amount of time, you will see, like, how different things will be. And so it's like for me, it's like I know – my real friends, it's like I can call certain people like that I haven't talked to in months and everything will still be the same. You know, we'll still have that bond, that connection and, you know, catching up on everything and seeing how everything is doing, you know, all those things. And there are certain people that I know just wouldn't care, you know, and I know certain people that contact me for certain things, you know, oh, since I'm in Vegas, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contact, you know, Angelica because she's in Vegas and I want to hang out, you know, with somebody in Vegas. It's like this. Eh. Exactly. You know? <laughs> this, yeah. This is the other thing that, okay, okay. The other thing need that a place to stay to or of, some shit, right? Yeah, need, need a place to stay mm-hmm. or, you know, just just because. Like, it, it was always interesting to me, like, how uh, – certain people will come out the woodworks when they just needed something, you know. And 
for myself, it's like I'm always, if I say that I'm your friend, then you can always call me. You know, it's like my number is ready available, feel free to text me, you know, or anything like that. It's the same way with people that I interact with on, um, are the people that I work with to make their custom pieces. It's like you have access to me. You know, you have if you have questions or you want to know something, you can just always send me a message, you know, and I'll answer you back. But, you know, if something starts to go, like, out of hand or it's like, nah, this is kind of starting to feel a little needy or is draining or something like that, then, ah, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, like, you know what, I'm going to have to cut you off because, X, Y, and Z, you know, but I'm starting to get that to the point where I'm not even telling people, it's like, dude, you say you don't talk to me, I'm not going to talk to you, you know, and you're not going to have access to me anymore because what's the point? You just hit me up when you need something. And, you so, know, I'm not just like, <laughs> you know. When you, when, you, when you begin to value yourself, like when yep. people begin to when you be, begin to value yourself and the experiences that happen, you realize that you're starting to not compart compartmentalize spiritual information, and you put it all together, and you want to use it all together. You know, you you let's say you got into the secret, so you know you can visualize and vibrate on things that you manifest. So, and then if you if you know that, then you know that ties to the people you hang out with, and it ties to manifesting things that you desire and experiences that make you feel good. And, you know, people are a big part of that. So that means you also have to realize that certain people aren't worth your experiences being less than you, what you desire. And you owe that to yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean that individuals are bad people. It just means, look, we're in a different space. We're in a different space. Mm -hmm. We're in a different dimension. You you know that's not for me. They're not for me, and and you know it again. It goes back to valuing yourself because when you do that, you'd rather be alone than be um, susceptible to all the chaos that happens when you have chaos beings around you that are really just acting at all times at random instead of really trying to gain some kind of focal point, meaning trying to gain some kind of control and focus their energy in a direction and build towards something. If you notice, the individuals you know that, that aren't doing that is very chaotic. You know, it's always something new that's crazy. And it's like, damn, like, damn, like, you know, your life is, is a movie, but like one of the real dramatic ones that are just, it's just very energy draining. It's always something happening. Some some beef with this person, some argument over here, some kind of real dramatic shit. And it's just like, damn, it's like a soap opera. It's like the days of our lives or something, where it's like they wrote up the worst uncomprehensible drama and just acted it out, and somehow this crazy shit is playing out. And that's what happens, because we're not being considerate of those around us. Like, I've learned to know that, okay, yeah, I feel wronged right now. But because I know the person in front of me, I know I'll do myself a more disservice from approaching them. And I'll end up stressing myself out and putting myself in a worse space from trying to have a fucking conversation about them with them because they're not able to comprehend. So why am I going to waste my time because I'm stuck in my ego, I feel wrong, I'm in my ego, how dare they, right? So now I'm going to go try to make this person see things my way. For what? All it's going to do is be some, they're going to get defensive, and then I'm going to continue to try to explain myself. They might say something that's going to cause me to get defensive, then I'll say something, and then it just the whole intent of just trying to explain something has gone to some place of no return and you find yourself back in your own place where you were wherever you are alone like damn that didn't go no, the way I wanted to go but since your ego's fed up all, all high in it you won't admit that to them you'll still walk in front of them acting like you know you don't want to apologize for those words that you said because your heart is nowhere in that situation in the sense to where I'm talking about compassion and empathy here. I'm not talking because 
People, you know, I had somebody who clearly missed the boat try to tell me the other day on a comment uh, saying, you know, hearts, you know, got heart. And I'm like, yo, you missing, you missing the point. There's, there's, there's two, there's a physical representation of having heart. And then there's the spiritual representation of what that means. It don't, it's easy for a lot of people to speak up and have heart in that kind of way. Though there's some people that can't. And, but that's a whole nother kind of having heart. That's a, that's an external kind of having heart. You know, uh, you could say a dog has heart when it feels wrong or if it wants its food from that other dog, it's going to have heart just like you and go start a fight. What does that serve you? I'm talking about, in a sense, the, the spiritual evolution of us as individuals. Remember, this thing is bigger than, you know, this life. If you don't, mm-hmm. if, if we don't figure it out ter- in terms of, how to coexist with energies around us from an individual spiritual perspective and deal with our baggage, our heart, that judgment will not be lighter than the feather because of all that baggage. You're holding that and it swells up in a physical sense. Just like they tell you stress in the mind and the body causes literal tension in the body. But okay. So from that perspective, your heart won't be lighter than the feather. And if you need to go figure out, uh, that's an Egyptian thing that happens in, in the afterlife where they weigh mm-hmm. your heart as a feather to see if you transition to become, come back into, for, come back into um, uh, synchronicity with that, that all energy or, or practically do your ass just come back and get that baby brain put back on you and reincarnation to have to figure this shit out all over again. So when I'm speaking about the chakra system and getting into the heart and being able to, not be in the ego and say, okay, yeah, this person in front of me is on their own journey. Yeah, they haven't figured out something that I've come to terms with, and they keep wronging me in that regard. But I'm not, I'm not going to be able to explain to them because people only understand what their perception up to the point of you coming in contact with them allows them to. So if they haven't read the things that you've read, come to terms with the things that you come to terms with, been presented with the things that you've been presented with, you guys are going to be speaking from two different vantage points. It's going to be like you're speaking Chinese and they're speaking Swahili. There's no point. There's really no point. That's why I'm not concerned with trying to be something different on Take the Night. The people that get it will get it. If you don't, if the people that don't get it, they will bounce. And that's not Uh saying that they're less than or the others that stay are greater than. It means everybody is going to be understanding things at their own rate. And I understand, ultimately, it's about our own individual growth. So when I'm speaking about the heart and and returning back to your heart, it has nothing to do with relationships. From my perspective, I can do without relationships. You know, a lot of times it's work dealing with your relationships. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. It's work. It's work. Why is it work? It's because you have to, you have to divide yourself to other people's emotional needs. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great experience to learn how to be a more wholesome, balanced individual. But at the same time, you realize, you know, why it's work also and what that lesson is here to do for you also. It's like when I'm speaking about the heart, I'm speaking about how to get, how to understand it, how it suits you as an individual. If you get over your baggage and get over your dramas, you end up not getting sucked into arguments at every turn because your ego or your emotions are being poked by the things people are saying unconsciously or consciously to you. Why let it affect you? If somebody's trying to get on your nerves and you've come to terms with what's going on in this realm, you realize they got a problem, clearly. Uh-huh. They're more focused uh-huh. on what you're doing than what than they need to be working on themselves. So why are you going to let yourself, if you know you manifest the things that you vibrate on, the things that you focus on, why are you going to let an external influence, another person, pull you out of the vibration, the alignment with the things that you want, the person that you want to be? When they're going to be who they are, when you get sucked out of who you want to be, because you're just going to be closer to who they are if you get sucked into that argument. That's who they are. 
So now you're more of them. They're still them. But now you're in regret because you've lost some of you or who you wanted to be. So when I'm talking about learning that compassion, that empathy, that transformation, getting into that heart chakra, why I did that video on the Black Panther that I'm sure is going over so many people's heads because they're emotionally invested in the movie to where they can't understand because they got their egos and their 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 own motives involved in what they want it to be. They won't even be able to understand what I'm saying when I say that the dude that everybody thinks is some kind of badass that they wanted to win, the Michael B. Jordan's character, he was the, he was there to show you one of the lo- the most lowest forms of a male energy you could possibly find on the planet. All he did the whole time was talk about what he wanted to do from a more angry kind of perspective. It was all rooted in anger, and it seems powerful the most, right? But he lost, right? He lost for a reason. They always lose if you, you haven't got that. But since we like to glorify that badass, not realizing that they always end up dying, it's like Tony Montana. People like to try to say he was some kind of badass, but when I watch the movie, I'm like, that's the dude you don't want to be. I'll take the I'll take the because everything I'll went to shit the at the end of the movie. He lost his best friend, this is the only night. person that had his back. Through his Tell drug habit and his insecurities through that drug habit, and his insecurity with his relationship with his sister and his friend dating his sister, he kills the only person that cares for him and that are truly protected. Then he also he outcasts his sister because now she hates him. So now he's lost family and now he's dealing with a whole bunch of cut- cutthroats that care nothing about him that are only around him for money. So he's exposed himself. And it's like since people are stuck on lights and shiny stuff, they miss the story that they're supposed to see. The, the Black Panther was showing people that that was a heart chakra movie. That's why it was a heart-shaped herb. I'm, I'm always, you know, as long as, and that's how I know this heart thing is all tied together because it, that movie came out right in the midst of the Celine Dion dreams and all that kind of stuff and the, this symbol that looks like a heart, and it's all a heart chakra dream is why the one panther has the blue has a has a yellow stomach chakra kind of colors on his black panther suit and then the one that wins has the purple because he's clashed and collided his chakras together and he's pushed the the blue and the red together and he's became the purple therefore he's earned his crown the purple crown because he's gone through the heart he's able to to act with force but also know when not to act with force. Like I was telling you, sometimes standing up for yourself is going to, you have the right to, but know when that person is, a, is an automaton. They're a zombie. So they're not going to be able to even see what you're saying. You're wasting your time. And you're wasting your time. And that's why you have to know when to act with force and to know when to Sit back and wait for when the time's right and work with timing and be more strategic. And that's the difference between a general and an army and the guys that are on the front line in, in most cases. One's more rounded, able to strategize and know how to come up with a more, uh, more advanced approach to get what they want out of a situation just to remove it from just primarily being war. And others can't. They just want to run in, guns are blazing, right, like they say. And it's like, come on. Come on here. Get back into your heart. It'll make, it e- you know, it'll make life easier for you. And then your gifts, which that movie shows you, the heart-shaped herb gives you the power, right? If you get back into your heart, you that's the root of your gifts. You want to be successful, you want to be creative, you want to be expansive, you want love, you want to, sex, you want to feel sexy, right? you got to love yourself. It's all in the heart, not from acting out in, as a physical, I got heart. What you mean? I got heart. Look, I'm saying this to you right now. I got heart. That's, that's, that's not heart. It, I mean, it is, but it's more of a physical kind of thing. I'm talking about being able to 
to, to a spiritual kind of way. And that's what that movie, just to bring it to close that out, was showing you the difference between two family members that both have a tie to the crown, but one's unfit to rule, the other one is. Why? One is a lower chakra being that's created a, a way to the voice chakra. He could talk all day, right, about what he want to do. Didn't see how the world was going to be getting weapons that they shouldn't have. He couldn't even see that those weapons being out amongst the world would have caused more harm to the world than good. He was so caught up in what he wanted, right, and what good. One was more balanced. One was more rounded. But, you know, I'm sure some people still ain't going to see that because they want to be the one that has the tragic end. Before we get into the after hours, if you have a question, the you can call in to 15-383-5822, and you don't only have to have a question. You can just add to the discussion. Um, again, that's 215-383-5822, and you can press 1 when you do that, and I'll be able to see you're in here. And so uh, I, I'm going to do this now. Someone has their hand up. What do you think about that, Alica? Go for it. Area code 412 What's going on? Hey, guys. Hey, Bonnie. Can you hear me What's okay? What's going on, Miss Bonnie? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Hello, how are you? Hey, so good. I have sort of yourself? like a I'm I'm pretty good. I'm uh, recouping after my weekend last weekend still. I'd say I'm pretty tired. Um, but so I have, I guess, kind of a question or maybe um, a clarification I'm looking for you guys, like your point of view of this, because it's coming up a lot. That's what you're talking about. Um, you guys were talking in the beginning about, you know, giving without expectations, and, you know, giving from your heart and um, and then at the same time talking a lot about, like, the ego and being, knowing what you're worth and not, um, I guess, like, succumbing to other people's, like you were talking about arguments and not getting sucked in and not explaining yourself because it's not worth your time. And I almost feel like it's a little bit of a hypocrisy in a way. And I'm hoping maybe you guys can clarify so that I don't necessarily feel that way, or maybe I don't know. Okay. What, want, what I'm getting let me at jump on like, this thing. So, go for it. So what you're saying is, is if let me let me see. So since having self worth means not standing up, not not putting up with things that you don't want to put up with, how does how does it at the same time mean sometimes you should just Bite your tongue? Is that the hypocr- hypocrisy in it? That's part of it. That's part of it. So here's my example. So for me, like in my quote-unquote biz venture right now, um, like part of what I do is like business, business. But I, I also give to people that need it, hoping that it's going to help propel them forward. Because I like seeing other people be successful. I love seeing people happy. So I really am I do have expectations and I do want to get something back, but it's not necessarily like them giving something back to me, if that makes sense. And on the flip side of okay. that, like sometimes, you, like I have that one friend like Angelica was talking about, that all she does is complain and she's been in the same situation for like the last 12 years with the same guy and he's horrible and I, I hear about, and I actually had to somewhat cut her off because she was draining the hell out of me. Like, it was like, I've already told you how I feel about this about 756 times, and I, so I'm i telling you one more time, either stay away from him or I don't, like, I don't want to hear about it anymore. Like, and I had to just put my foot down. But, like, in the beginning, it seemed like I was being the quote-unquote good friend because I was letting her vent and, you know, get her frustrations out. But in the end, I had to be, I had to stand up for myself and say, okay, you're sapping energy that I don't have. So, okay. you so, feel like, so, like, I'm, okay, I'm a little bit on, stuck in feeling, thing, like, no. guilty <laughs> where, okay. where I'm giving okay, to so people let, and let, I am expecting something. Okay, let me deal with the, the dealing with trying to receive things in the world we live in in terms of, like, you know, gratification from the works you're doing. Like, you, you're in business or something like that. You want something in return. Okay, so 
it's, there's no hypocrisy in it when you realize you get what you put out, right? So it's from the perspective of a lot of times people realize they, they say things like, okay, somebody always wants something from me. But it's like, are you somebody that also wants, always wants something from somebody else out of any given situation? Are you only supporting people because you see that you might be in business with them or get some kind of benefit from them? Or do you just do it because it's cool? There's a difference. Like, the motive is if, if, if you do things just to show love, like with your kid, right? Do do you tell your kid that that what they drew when they scribbled and you know that it was beautiful because you wanted them to love you or did you just do it because your heart was in the right place? Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like, no, that, like there's a difference. Yeah, that makes sense. There's a there's a difference there's a difference between doing something because your heart is in the right place. Like if I say like if my sister shows me something I'm going to I'm going to say it's cool not because I want her to I want her I want her to give me money or work with me. I'm going to do it because I want to I want her to blossom independent from me. Independent from me. Like with my woman, I tell her like, yo, if if we don't end up being together forever, which is not in my conception at all. But the one thing I do to make this not a waste of time for you so I can feel good is please take something from my spirit, from my mind, because that's the value that I feel I have to offer for you. And I don't mind you taking some of that and going on and using it in your life independent from me. When most people, they're like, yo, you got to be with me. You're, you, you know, you, you're with me or you're not with nobody. I'm not going to help you if you're not with me. Because they need to get something out of it. You understand? Like, like people only, for the most part, most of the time, like, like, for example, if you're supporting your favorite musician, you're supporting your favorite musician because you like them. They're giving you something. But have you ever supported somebody who you necessarily, it's not for you, but you'll still support them because you realize the life journey is people need to confident. When you're putting yourself out there, in this world where there's not too many opportunities for someone to say, yo, keep doing that, everyone's giving you many opportunities to be discouraged. When you understand that, you get what you put out, right? So, yeah, you don't necessarily want to say, I'm going to support everybody because I want everyone to support me, but just from your heart, to just have a pure heart. Like when kids are sharing on the playground, they're not saying, okay, now tomorrow you have to give me something. It's in their natural being. It's only later on when everybody starts probing their mind with these ideas to where they're like, okay, now give me something. So there isn't, like, I can see how you can say, like, how anyone could think there's a hypocrisy in it, and which there is, which there is in everything. I mean, we're floating in the galaxy. So, you know, that's a little weird in its own sense. But there's always two sides to everything. We live in a dualistic plane. So that's why perception is everything. It's where your, your, your vantage point is. So, like, in one person, in this dualistic plane, from one person's perspective, they're like, yo, that's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to only help people that help me. That may work for them. That may work for them, but you can guarantee the laws of the universe are going to have that person feeling like at some point they're being used. So the way, the way to right. get around that is to just be somebody that's willing to get, extend a hand. You know, it's like when you used to watch a movie where, you know, there's an old lady and a man says, let me help you across the street. Does he want money from her or is he just doing the right thing? You see, we don't know how to discern anymore. Like, like there is no, there, you know, like to just do the right thing when, when it's presented. For, for example, like I'll see uh, milk, like people in uniform that serve, right, in a place where, we know, where, where it's commonly said that these people are serving for your protection so you can have your freedom, right? 
Do you know how many times I see people walk by people in uniform and don't say thank you for your service? Now, when I, do, when I say thank you for your service, is it because I want them to give me money or I want them to continue to protect me abroad? No. They're, they're, they've already signed up for that. It's going to happen regardless. I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. Right. Now, I regarding, guess, so I think that, now, regarding your friend, I think, now, let, let me try to touch on them real quick because you touched on regarding your friend. Now, uh, from the perspective of, okay, just like a general, remember, a general knows, a general is a general not because, or statistically, or supposed to be not just a general because they knew somebody, they knew somebody. They're supposed to have qualities that have led them to possess that title. They got to be round. So when it comes to dealing with other people, right, a coach, a head coach, dealing with other men or other women under you, a CEO, these people, people got the game fucked up. Everybody wants to be a boss, but they don't realize what this entails. It entails being rounded enough to know how to act with different energies at different times and how to deal with things and to be strategic and not to be over-emotional and acting just guns a-blazing all the time. That's the difference between the soldier and the general. Now, when it comes to a friend that's always perpetually just on that same tune, it, 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 it shouldn't take too long before you realize that they're not really searching for growth. They may talk about it from time to time, but when they're alone by themselves, they're not trying to actually create a straight line and hold themselves and tune themselves to a way. It's clear. It's clear. They're going to need, like, like it's kind of like somebody who's doing some kind of drug that makes their teeth fall out. They may need every tooth to be gone before they realize they need to change. Now, for you to say, okay, this person, from what I know, to always take on this energy and deal with this conversation, doesn't make me a bad friend. What are they doing to me? Are they considering me? The fact that every time they, they hit me up, they're, they're tuning me to their downer frequency when you can try to change the subject, like, yo, try to give them the, the more optimistic side. A lot of those people, they don't even want the optimism at all, of it all. They want to stay fixed on what they see, their, their perspective, where they're wrong. They don't want to see the other way to look at a situation. They're stuck there. They want to just vent. So you're, you're, you're right. just looking out for your best interest and you're doing them a, a, a service by not dealing with it. It's like, who's really your friend? The friend that doesn't tell you, hey, yo, what you're doing is going to kill you. Or that person that just allows you to do it around them all the time. There is no contradiction in that at all. It's, it's, it all works. I'm supposed to be able to say, yo, you're very negative and if you continue to, to hit me up with this all the time and we can't build on a growth together on a more optimistic, like, let's talk about the solutions. Let's talk about what we can build, what we can learn from this situation and make something progressive out of this. If we can't do that, that's what I'm about. If we can't do that, then we're just not, we're not vibing, and that's okay. You shouldn't feel obligated. That goes back to if, if somebody's whooping your ass every day, man or woman, just because you've taken on some kind of obli- some kind of vow or something, are you supposed to stay? No. That's, that's your choice. That's the individual's choice. But at some point, these people have to realize it's in their best interest to walk away because they're going to end up the one dying in the situation. So there is no contradiction right. when it comes to being there for your friend. You're also being there for them by telling them, yo, you're, you're very negative and your life is projecting such, so I'm going to have to step away. Now, if they, are not, if they can't see that, then, of course, they are somebody that are clearly, they never were really uh, tuned to any of the information that told them, yo, you are what you eat. So they're not going to get it and they're going to be like, yo, this person just dismissed me. But, yo, that's not up to you. This is an individual journey here. We're supposed to shed light on people of good light and then, you know, move forward and keep doing that. But when you have moments where people are just not getting it, 
That's they got to get it on their own. Everything is two folded. Mm-hmm. Right, that makes. I mean, that makes sense. I, uh, um, like I said, I think I think where the the idea of the hypocrisy came in for me is the fact that, um, like, like I give because I like I like to, and I like seeing people happy, and I like helping people. Um, like, if I see a need and I can fill it, and it, you know, it's not. To, you know, causing any negativity, like, in my direction, then I'm all for that. I think where I was getting hung up is the fact that I feel like I almost expect, like, a good reaction from that. From that. No, nah, see, Does expectations that are always yeah. going to leave. Expect, expectations will always leave you to be let down. That's why if you read, like, if you go back to the seven spiritual laws of success, it'll tell you to do things like not judge, which – Expectations and judging kind of, to me, They're kind are, of like the same can kind thing. of merge two together, right? They can merge two together, right. two together. So if you're walking around doing things with expectations, you're actually not just doing it because you like to do it. You're doing it because you want to get a pat on the back, which is offsetting. Well, no, not purpose. a pat on the back. I'm saying, I'm saying, like, I, I'm, a, I would expect them to have like not a specific reaction, but a certain, like, I'm going to do this because I know that it's going to make things better for them, or I think it's going to make them happy, or I think it's going to help them along their journey. So, I mean, that's an expectation itself, but it's not, it's not an expectation. Like, okay, say if I make something for somebody and I give it to them and they don't like it, Am I going to be a little bit upset about that? Yeah, maybe. But on the other hand, it's going to be like, okay, well, why didn't you? And what can I change in the future? You know, going, what can I learn from this, basically? Like, was there something, is it something specific okay. to you? Or is so, it something with the quality of, you know what I mean? Like, but so I guess it's as a to woman, invoke a, as, as, like, women and men in touch with that feminine aspect, sometimes we can get caught in the giving too much of ourselves, Right. We want we to people who don't even appreciate the things that we do will end up giving too much of ourselves and then we can feel some kind of way if they don't like it and now we want to know how can we make you like it when to be honest you should be this is an individual thing so if even if you're giving you're giving because in the act of giving you Bonnie is you're having a spiritual growth in practicing that act there's a person somewhere that hasn't even been adept to the the actual concept of giving. So, therefore, they're missing out on a whole practice, a spiritual practice that is doing something spiritually. It's opening up, opening up spiritual doors. The only reason why anyone ever said, yo, you get what you receive, is because they were explaining something that just happens naturally in the universe. If no one needed to understand it, no one would have ever explained it. So the fact that it's been explained, it's causing a hiccup. These things would happen regardless. The fact that you want to give, you should think of it as you're giving to others for yourself. In a sense to where you're learning how to give from a place of pure giving. Like, I'm just giving. I'm giving. And I found a way to feel good giving without getting shit back. Imagine. Because what happens is, is you just give so much. Remember, these are laws here. So eventually, people who appreciate what you give, Bonnie, they're going to show up. Even if it's not the people close around you, somebody, is. people will show up that are given that reaction that you, you, you would like to see in those, like some of those people who may not be reacting. They're going to show up because the law makes it so. It can't not happen. If you're giving and you're giving just to give, somebody's going to show up that's going to appreciate what you're giving eventually. And then look, think about what happens in the individual journey for you. When you learn to give and to do without getting any kind of, like, like applause, you just do it. You're just working. You're grinding at all times. So, therefore, like, let's say, let's say 
someone out there, they're putting out stuff for clicks, for likes. If they don't get likes, what happens to them? Their self-esteem and their attitude towards what they're doing diminishes. Therefore, now they get stuck. They, they lose momentum to pursuing that dream of theirs because they feel like they're watching for results so often to where now they're like, nobody's liking what I'm doing. I'm going to stop. But if you just give, 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 just do, just do, eventually somebody going to clap and you're going to be like, damn, somebody clapped. Damn, somebody else just clapped. Have you ever, uh, uh, like, done enough research on people to see, like, a lot of people, they, they end up with success and they didn't even realize, like, what they were doing was warranting any kind of gratification. They were just doing it. And they were like, I never saw myself. I didn't think anyone was going to like what I was doing. That's the law taking effect right there. They're just not knowing how to explain it because they might, you know, these things happen to us inadvertently, meaning a person could be practicing these things with no idea. So there's a person somewhere sitting around. They like to draw. They're just drawing. They're just putting it out there, sharing it, have no expectation whatsoever, but yet people like it. More people are liking it. More people are liking it. And then, you know, they, people like it now. And they, all along, they didn't know what was going to happen out of it. There's a difference between that person and that person that's simply seeking attention. They're just doing it because they want to be somebody. They're like, I want to be a personality, so I'm going to do this. And they're trying too hard. And then they, they get sucked into gratification. Therefore, like most, like you see how like a lot of times they tell you most people who have been in the public eye have a hard time when their time is up because they got addicted to the applause. When, when you get addicted to the applause, you're no longer doing it for yourself. You're doing it for the applause. So when the applause leaves, what happens? You're going to go into depression. Your, your self-worth and your value is going to, going to diminish. You have none. It's all false. It was all built off of a false pretense. It was all an illusion. Your confidence was based off of external gratification, which there's nothing spiritual in that. Everything I tell you that you need to do for yourself, do it to build confidence. When you create, when you put yourself out there, do it to become stronger as an individual. Like, I had a problem giving speeches at some point in my life in, like, middle school to speak in public, right? So, so to speak in public was more of an individual self-growth evolutional thing, evolutionary thing more than it was me just wanting to talk to people. It, it actually feels uncomfortable in the very act. I'm just doing it because I'm conquering my own demons. You understand? Yeah. So that's how yeah, you should I mean, look I mean, at, like, when you're doing things, you should be doing it from the perspective of what demon am I conquering right now? Because soon enough, if I keep doing this, boom, that's gone. I don't have that hiccup no more. I'm, I'm that much more of an efficient being in regards to speaking in public. Okay, if I have a problem sharing things that I make, boom, let me start making things and sharing it. The more and more you do that, the more and more that doesn't affect you anymore. Boom, that hiccup is gone. I'm that much more efficient in that area. What, put the two together, speaking in public and sharing something you made, a presentation. You're a businesswoman, you got an idea. If you have a problem showing things you make and give, have a problem giving presentations and speaking in public, when you got to go to that meeting to give that presentation, you're not going to be able to do it because you jumped deep into just doing these things without approaching it from a strategic level of development on, in, in the area specific to what ultimately combines to being a presentation. You see, so like you can work on sharing things, Regarding a presentation, like pitching, right? You can work on sharing things you made to just people around you. Then take it outside of that to people in the world. Then what happens? Okay, now you have a problem speaking. Speak in front of people in the living room. Then speak in front of people somewhere else. You see, when you just start doing these things, speaking it from the perspective of growing, then every, every benefit that comes out of it, because, you know, everything everyone makes – Somebody somewhere is going to gravitate to because there's something for everybody. 
That's why getting hung up on sounding like or looking like another person is, is really irrelevant and, and suits you or the individual thinking like that none at all because you're just ending up a clone, and if that person fades away, so do you. So ultimately, you should be thinking about, you know, what inside of me do I need to build on? There's a, there's a spiritual thing, and then there's a physical representation of that. If I have a problem with confidence, right, as an individual, me, boy, um, and then that's going to affect me speaking when I'm speaking to you or if I'm speaking to anybody. So if, I, if, I've, if I've noted that problem with confidence inside of myself, I say I need to work on that. So what happens naturally as I find a, 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 a truthful confidence, not based on some kind of vanity of mine, but let's say I tend to go like I have a good heart, I mean well, because I do. So I'm always tethering my actions from the fact that I know that I mean well in my heart. Regardless of what anybody else sees, I know that I mean well. So that keeps me going in my confidence to know that if I act, I act in meaning well. But what happens is as I continue to act, I act and I get better at vocalizing my actions. Therefore, in the physical sense, I get better at vocalizing my ideas. But ultimately, it was only to become a better spiritual being, not the other way around. A lot of people are looking for success and money to feel like they're better inside. And then they realize if they ever do get that success and money, it, ne- it didn't really matter at all, and they fall to substance abuse because they're trying to get over those things that were going on inside. And now they have access. Instead of, you know, working on those things inside, then getting all that access, which you would be in a, a, you know, a better situation because this is a lifelong journey of working over our demons. You know what I mean? Yeah. You understand? I what think I should have. Yeah, I'm just thinking. I, I spend <laughs> I spend a good deal of time at home with two little ones. I mean, the older two are here, obviously, when they're not at school. A lot of time in my head, my own head, because conversations with a four and a one year old only go so far. <laughs> So I think I should have probably phrased my question differently and asked, does it make me a hypocrite to like to want to evoke some kind of emotion or even in myself and giving? Like like I said, when I give something to somebody and, and they like love it or whatever or they're super happy, it, it evokes like almost like an adrenaline rush where I just want to keep doing it because it's like, okay, I want to make this person happy. I want to yeah. see this person happy. Mm-hmm. And you can't see, make people like happy. Like I said, you know what I mean? You'll get addicted to that response instead of just acting of non-return. You see, you see that tied back to what I said, how people get addicted to the applause. You just said it, that right. adrenaline. That adrenaline is, from seeing that reaction. You'll live for that. And when it goes away, where do I now exist in the world or in this family? No one's reacting to me anymore. Where is my place? Then the insecurity will come upon you. So to get over these mental demons that fall on us, they're all rooted in expecting external, external things. You see, because if, if giving, after a while giving, you, you start, it starts off very pure, but once you get that clap, it's like, ooh, that felt good. And then you get two claps, ooh, that felt good. Three, oh, yeah, I'm loving this. But then when they go away, damn, like, where's my value? Okay, so let me ask Who you how this, now? okay, that ties in too. Because I, I, I'm going to do it regardless. If I make something and somebody doesn't like it, that doesn't mean I'm not going to go and keep, you know, like stop giving stuff to people. Like that would just be stupid because it's, it's, because like you said, like I really do have, like initially have those intentions of, okay, I can help this person or I see something that they need and I can do that. Or, I mean, I actually tend to overcommit myself because I'll be listening to different conversations throughout the day or something's going on and I'll go, oh, I can help with that, that, that. And by the time I get responses back, I'm like, shit, I don't have enough time to do all these things. But like, uh, and I just totally lost my train of thought. I hate when that happens. <laughs> Um, now, now, if you want, if you want to invoke good feelings in people, you're doing a good thing yes. to give some clarity That's on what that. I'm trying, like, remember, I think, remember, intention, intention is everything, right? 
So you're doing a I think service that's why my to the word world. Is messed up. Yeah, yeah. You're doing a service to the world and to anybody that comes in contact with you if your intention means well. That's why I said, remember, with me, I know my intent is always from a good place. But, see, I don't focus on the response as much as I do my intent. I focus only on my intent because if I focus on the response, if you're not getting a response, you get discouraged in your intent. How some become bitter. So why? Right. See, what I'm doing is I'm I'm rewriting the algorithm for you in a sense to where it's like, okay, if I'm, I want to invoke this, it, this this reaction in people from a good place, but what happens to most that algorithm is just simply that. If they're not getting the reactions they seek, bitterness can come. You can become like, you know, feel like maybe I'm not doing this right. Maybe I, you know, maybe I'm not good at what I'm doing at all. You know, these things that cause more of a hiccup in your mental, your psyche, now take you off of that path of good intent, and it gets all clouded with all this other shit these insecurities. So to what I was saying, because I understood what you meant, but I jumped over the, the, the return and I tried to just clean it up in a sense to where I'm like, focus on your intent and how it serves you as growing as an individual just by the greater good of transitioning out of this planet. Ultimately, your deeds are setting you up for the afterlife. You know, your etherical right. form, what's, to give, what's going to be given to you in that space. Remember, energy doesn't die, it just changes shape. So to think that you don't exist outside of the physical body is contradictory to that very term that I didn't come up with, but science did. You see? So, so right. thinking, no, to, to know that that is a real reality and to have that in mind all the time, to, to now root your intentions from the place of, okay, I want to just grow as an individual. And as my intentions clean up and they become more pure, then I become a light to the world instead of a darkness. Therefore, you know, the reaction is going to come even if it's three, two, two people. I mean, you, you know, I, I make a lot of stuff. I do a lot of stuff, Bonnie. I, you know, I don't get all the applauses, and that's cool. I haven't stopped. I'm not going to stop. I'm doing it for me. Every time I do a take the night, I I feel like I'm better in terms of my attributes, and I've done something that I, I'm i not a leech to the planet, right? I'm doing my part in not leeching. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The, and I just want to add, just like, you know, what Boyd was saying is, like, he doesn't do it for himself, but the other thing that I know Boyd does is that he applauds himself. And that's something that a lot of people miss in that, you know, when they yeah. give something, they are, you know, they give it like, okay, my intentions are good, I'm going to give it to this person, but then they stop at, you know, giving that further reaction of like, I am proud, I'm happy that I did this, I know I'm helping this person, so I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. You know, regardless of anybody else who gives it to me, I'm going to give it to myself because I did an awesome freaking job. You know, and that's where exactly. you kind of have to focus. And that's, you know, where I can understand why, Bonnie, you have this hang-up is that because, you know, you're not giving that part to yourself. So, therefore, you know, you get it from others. And it's like... See, I think I have a mix of that. Like, I think, and I, I think, like I said, I have a lot of time, like, during the day where I'm kind of in my own head space. And I'm going, okay, so I know I really wanted to help this person. I did that, and I felt really good about it, and they felt good about it. But wait, does that make me a hypocrite? Because I was expecting them to kind of wanted them to feel good about it, and they feel good about it. Like, do, does that make sense? Like, I don't, it's not well, yeah, it doesn't, anything it doesn't, I'm necessarily okay, getting it, externally. It's, it's not. But it's, it's like, it's not, it, I'm it, overthinking it. it. Yeah, and, and, that's a, and that's an issue, too, is like, you know, like Boyd would say, just do it for yourself. When you do it for yourself, you know, and you know that you did a great job and you are, you know, giving yourself that appreciation and that recognition, when it comes from somebody else, it amplifies your own, you know. So there's nothing wrong with that. 
It's like, you know, when I made the piece for Boyd, it's like I was super proud of it. You know, I was excited, you know, and once he got it and he felt the same way, it only amplifies the feelings that I had even more. That's why I was so excited of, you know, all the pictures and videos you stuff to post. I'm like, oh, my right. God. Okay. So, it's the same, so it's the same thing. It's like you, those feelings that you're getting from others that match yours only amplify it more. So, you know, you just have to get used to the times that you don't get it. It's like, okay, this person isn't, you know, telling me I did a great job, but I know I did a great job, and I don't need their validation to confirm or affirm that I'm doing a good thing because you know in your heart, like what was saying, your intention, you know, what you set out. So nobody can take that away from you, and nobody can, you know, lower that unless you allow them to. So, you know... It's it, not hypocritical. It, it is not, you know, there's not anything bad from feeling, you know, proud of getting recognition from somebody. You know, it's just that when you start to seek it, that's where it becomes, like Boyd was saying, you know, people get addicted, they get very ego-based, and, you know, that's where it starts to become an issue, and that's why you have to be very aware of where your intentions are coming from. Is this really for you, for your own, you know, self-healing and benefit and growth, or is it because you like the feeling that you're getting from doing this specific thing? And, you know, and that's where... That's like a such a fine line for people. Like that's why I even asked the question because I'm like, am I, am I a hypocrite for feeling good about making people feel good, basically? And it sounds silly, but that's exactly where I was starting to like, like I'm following Gary Vee and I'm following some of these other motivational speakers, and you know that they they're all talking about like that's like a trend right now. It's just kindness, 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 and giving without expectation. And I'm going, but I do have expectations. Like, I expect that I'm going to feel good if I do this. It's like, okay, does that make me a hypocrite? Or am I not supposed to feel good? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, like I said. Because I you're, like, seeking, <laughs> you're, seek, you're doing the same thing that a man or a woman does when they seek happiness in their other person because they're okay. missing something inside of themselves. Like, you, you shouldn't do it to make feel good after you make other people feel good. That means that you only feel good or will only feel good once you've got clarification that you made someone else feel good, which means if you were a computer, that would be looked at as like a flaw in your operating system because you need to be able to operate independently of external sources. Efficiently. Right. And like I said, I think that's why it's such a fine line for so many people where – I mean, and, and why I asked for clarification, because it's like, like you were saying, it goes back to intent, like, the... Take it back to you. Take it back I'm to doing you. It back All your you, like, yeah, like, I'm doing it because it makes me feel good to do it, and I know it's the right thing to do, not because I'm expecting them to also feel good about it and want more of it, or I guess that's like a crude <laughs> explanation, but like, I, <laughs> I get it. I, or I the algorithm that, that like, I will use is I'd be like, I, I'm giving because it makes me feel good. It doesn't matter how it's making them feel. Like, you got to switch that up because, you know, in the moments where no one reacts, because, you know, sometimes in the round people intentionally don't react because they're tired of you being so damn good at whatever it is you do. So they're like, I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt or I'm not going to give you know, and, you, you know, that's where it, it, you need to be able to, like Angelica said, Know that you are good at what you do and you're doing a good thing. But at the same time, that's where the ego can get inflated when you, you – that's why, you know, I all the time get back into my heart. Remember, you, you said it. I get in my head. I started off this show – well, I didn't, we didn't start it off, but eventually I segued into a symbol for a reason. I didn't just do it for no reason. It ties into – I touched on that very thing you said with the Sankofa symbol. It means go back and get it. So to go backwards, when you say you're in your head, and you know the head is one of the top chakras, and that's mentalism and intellect and thinking and all that kind of shit, going back to get the heart, which is what that symbol looks like, means when I, that's why I brought that up, go back to your heart. Because a kid, if you observe a child affection deprived, they do shit just to do it. They're not looking for your gratification 
or nobody else's. If they're drawing, they're drawing because they like to draw. They like what they draw. And the fact that you like it, it's just a plus. It's a plus. They're not, right. they're not saying, oh, you know, you don't like this. Let me try again. No, they're just doing it because that's why they tell you in the Bible, be like a child, do as a child, right? To have mm-hmm. that pureness to you in terms of your spirit. Because adults are simply reacting for reaction. They're doing for some kind of reaction. Therefore, we get caught up in all that and end up getting, you know, putting ourselves in bad spaces, uh, exploiting ourselves, doing a little too much, and looking crazy sometimes. So it's just a matter of, you know, doing it for yourself. Like finding, you know, like I said, I had a problem with, I have problem, I have problem with speaking publicly. So to do something like take the knife, it's helping me. It's helping me. We, were, we, we, we started off take the knife, didn't have nobody listening, Bonnie. Right? Mm-hmm. Nobody was listening. It was me and a helica and then me and a helica and D, just the three of us. So I'm I'm I, I decided to, to, to create the show to to improve on an aspect of myself. The fact that you're here just makes it that much better. But you know, there's gonna be nights when you're not here. Does that mean I'm we're gonna stop? No, we're gonna keep it going because you know, you gotta have you gotta find yourself in everything you're doing and figure out where it's benefiting you. And then when you pat right. yourself and on the back for what I... you're doing, and when you pat yourself on the back, always to make sure you don't lose touch and get into your ego, always stimulate your heart. And that's where music plays in. Music grounds us. See, people since since music has been institutionalized and monetized. No one remembers that these are spiritual tools. Music, frequency, is vibration. So you can use the music, which is why I talked about Sade or Celine Dion, because I was getting these channels about the heart chakra, because everyone is external and in their head today. So to get back to the heart, play, like if I'm feeling my, like there's times where I know, everything in my bones, Bonnie, knows that I'm one of the illest motherfuckers walking on the face of the earth, Right? But I also know that if I keep that vibration, I'm going to cause a problem for myself. So what I do is I ground myself. And I want to always think like I am just, I, I haven't figured it out. I'm, I'm, I need to just work and keep working at whatever I'm doing because that feeling like you are like just the greatest motherfucker on the planet will cause some kind of stagnation. At some point, so right because you're content uh, and you're it, complacent and you don't think exactly. you have room for improvement. So it's almost like exactly. I'm really, really good at what I'm doing. I'm doing a great job for where I'm at, but I know there's always better for me. Basically, right? Exactly. And, and, and exactly. that confidence is in the head, ego. It's in the mind. So when you're feeling, when you're feeling like too good, it's an ego, mental thing. It's a mentalism. You're justifying why you're so good. Who does this like me? Who does that like me? I won this. I won that. I must be this, right? So that's why I started off with that Sankofa symbol. Go back and get it. Get what? What does the symbol look like? The heart. Go back to the heart. What do I do when I do that to ground myself? I play heartfelt music because what it does is it reminds me what matters, my heart, how I feel. And when you get back to how you feel, that's where the ego gets offset, and then you find yourself back at a balanced place to where you can actually do some kind of good for yourself and those around you. Because if you just feel like you shit all the time, it's going to come across that way. And even when you're trying to help somebody, they end up taking offense to it. So you got to ground. Right. Well, I learned to ground myself using music, which is a tool. That's why I tend to make music that from a vulnerable spaces in me. Therefore, I'm always keeping myself grounded with my own craft. And if I was just making external music, talking about, you know, you know I have materials. Doesn't everybody? It's easy now, you know, to have materials. It's not like it used to be where you actually had to work to get shit. Like, anybody can, like, you know, everything is affordable. You can get an iPhone on a damn payment plan, part of your bill. So everybody has everything now, right? Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> Let's take it back to 
what people missing now, a heart from the perspective of what it feels like to act from it, to, to have to be a spiritual being that actually, you know, moves with a nice vibe to them, the one animals like to be around, you know, not the ones the animals is running from and growling at. You know, that's how you tell what's really going on unless that animal has a problem. But what I'm saying is, is I use my music to keep me grounded or other people's music that is of a grounding nature. Because if I just consume, I, I'm external, I have eyes, right? So I'm a physical being, I'm a, I'm a spiritual being in a physical world, in a physical body with eyes that always look outside of me, receiving all this external shit all the time, beautiful women, beautiful cars, beautiful sounding music, talented people, you, be, you begin to become a cube of an external external based kind of thing. So you ground a good way to ground yourself is by the music or by a pet and an animal showing that love or to kids. Some people use the children if you have children, but to ground yourself and pat yourself on the back also like Angelica said, because that was key and I wasn't touching on that. I do I I know I know who I am but I also don't keep that present at all because then I, would, I wouldn't do anything. Uh, you know what I'm saying? No one would do anything. It's like, especially when you understand that one of the most basic and important spiritual principles to realize you have nothing to prove to nobody. You're, you're down here proving things to yourself. This is an individual journey. So when you realize that, it's really tough. You know, because you realize, like, however you feel about yourself, you have all right to feel that way about yourself. But when you understand that, that law, that higher law, of you have nothing to prove to anybody other than yourself in a sense to where you're living to do things for yourself, you really have to keep yourself grounded because you will become somebody that's really in your ego because there's always a path, you know, that's why the left hand and the right hand path type shit, there's always good intention can always be perverted by that ego. It always comes in and ego's good, but it's not good when it takes over. It's supposed to, you're supposed to have control over it. It's supposed to serve you. So you got to keep it balanced, right? So, you know, you right, want to have to do. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm all right. Go ahead, Bonnie. It's cool. No, <laughs> no, I was just, I was just thinking that I, I think it's, also a little bit sad because, I mean, the, the timing of you guys' shows are always, like, uh, on point for me. I just have to point that out first off <laughs> because I've obviously been th- thinking about this a lot lately because I'm trying to get this podcast off the ground. And, like, my whole intent with the podcast is to help other women and, and men if they fall into this category. But I've had – I got stuck with chronic illness, I told you guys, like, what, six, seven, eight years ago. And it turned my entire world upside down. Like everything that I knew about who I was was completely just, or who I thought I was, I should say, was completely just thrown out the window. And uh, I Which is a good thing. Give from a place. Well, yeah, it, it did end up being a good thing. It, because I, I went through phases where, like, you know, I gave from my heart and I had a point in time where, you know, I was fortunate enough to have you know, more money than some of my friends. And I gave, what at that point, money, financial things without expectation. Like, you know, you guys need help with this, okay? And then I realized that that was actually a bad thing for certain people because then they start to depend on that and not help themselves. And it's like, I mean, there's a lot Balance. of back and forth and a lot of about putting yourself back in check and a lot of putting yourself, you know, making sure yeah. that you're balancing things. Balance. But the one thing that mm-hmm. happened in a negative way, like for me, in the, like after the first, I'd say year or two, of being sick, I got really frustrated with the people who were closest to me because I was always doing things, like I started to realize or think about the fact that I was always just doing things just to do them because I was trying to make other people's lives easier or make it better or whatever it was. And then when I would ask for help, I was getting all this kickback. And it was like, like I started, like you said, the resentment. Like I was getting angry with people because it's like, I really, really need your help. And then I started saying, well, I did this and I did that and I did this and then you're not even going to help me do this. And it's a little bit different when you have kids. But at the same time, or kids that can be doing things for themselves, I should say. <laughs> but at the same okay, time, you just, you just, you just like I really felt deep that. into that. But, what? 
you just you just led me somewhere with that. Now that makes me want to touch on knowing when you're giving your energy to the wrong people. And I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want you to tell me who the people are or none of that kind of stuff because I'm not here to do, tell you those kind of things, right? But it goes back to self-worth and how, you know, Alika talks about setting boundaries. And we talk about sometimes you got to cut people off because we tend to give ourselves to the people who don't appreciate it. And it's some right. kind of flaw in humanity. Like, it's like, you know, like, I notice young sometimes that the chicks like the dudes that don't give a fuck about them, don't even care about them. They, they chase them, right? Only when they get oh, yeah. older do they realize, wow, I want it. I should have been after this kind of cat. So, so it's part right. of the human condition to, to, to give ourselves or want the attention to people who don't even deserve it, don't even deserve your attention, don't even deserve your energy. And it's a matter of realizing that, who those people are, cutting it off and redirecting it. Why? Because when you direct that energy to people who appreciate it, they give back. They give back. It's natural. You don't have to tell them. And Helica chose to send me something on her own free will. I was like, you know, when she told me she was going to make me something, I was like, oh, that's what's up. Because, you know, she she, she, she just said she wanted to do it. And I appreciated the gesture and I do things in my own space, right? It's only, it, you know, I like it. So naturally, it was a part of something that I created in my world. So she, what she did, since she, she, you know, you could say she got lucky. Who knows? She, gave, she pointed her energy in my direction, and I gave back in the way that I do things in a, in a way, Right? I naturally, she didn't have to tell me, yo, boy, make this a part of one of your next project things that you create. She didn't have to tell me that. She had no right. idea. I, I texted her one morning and I said, I got a surprise for you. So and that feels matter, good, uh, right? You know, it, that whole it, thing, right? Well, what, you, what you just said. Telling somebody, I have inner, a surprise for you. Like, I'm super excited about this. And I'm really happy that, you know, I did this and I made, you know what I mean? Like, well, there's well, that. Let me tell you that, about me. So you can know, like I, I, on my end, I, I'm pretty matter of fact, because I'm like, yo, this is me, baby. You know what I'm saying? It's all day. I wake up this way. Beyonce, you know what I'm saying? So I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much numb to myself most of the time. So it's like, I was like, I got a surprise for you, you know? And I chose to take all thoughts out of my mind because then what happens is I've realized you can get caught mentally again. I wonder if she likes it. I wonder if she'll like it. Then it's like I'm in a space I don't even need to be in. So I choose to just put it out and try my hardest to clear my mind and go to something else that has nothing to do with what I just did. Because then you get caught into mentalism, and then you get pulled into these spaces of insecurity and doubt, which ends up making you the opposite of anything you wanted to feel. I make sure I put out good feelings, but I also know that if I maintain a certain feeling, then I just become that, right? So so why fluctuate? I've chose to stay in a, a space accessibility to my creative gifts, and, and it's just like I wake up this way, right? Because your words are spells. So I just said that to you, and this is something I say, right? So that's a spell I'm casting on myself. This is me, baby. I wake up this way, right? When most people, they're talking to themselves like, I hope I'm good. Mm, like, oh, I, I, I'm not that good at what I do. I'm not, I suck, you know? Oh, how do I look today? I'm ugly, right? You see, that's a spell. So that's why they talk about your words and things and you need to watch your mouth and all that kind of stuff because at the same time as I said to you, this is me, baby. I wake up this way. I also told you that I I balance myself and I tune myself back to my heart and the things that matter. The things I make don't even matter because they they don't go with me when I transition. They don't go with me. What matters is how people remember me. How I, you know, you know who I was when I wasn't trying. So it's like you can, you know, you can go to the store See a person, bump them and, and, frown, and give them a look, and they can see you a year later and be like, yo, I, my cats are tripping. 
uh, is with you and be like, that person is an asshole, right? That person remembers you as an asshole because of one moment, right? So it's like right. I, ch- I choose to just be what I want to happen to me because it's like, you know, and it's just rooted in becoming a better person and a better spirit, not from, you know, I, I, I'm different. And so if I want to mentalize my plight, which I don't do often, I'd say, okay, you know, I'm, I don't look, I don't, my external appearance isn't like what's in, right? My, my, the way I articulate myself and the things that are in my mind most of the time and the things I care to speak about aren't popular to people in the space in which what I do, one of the things that I do. So my plight, if I'm going to do the whole mental thing, for one, it may take some time, but I don't focus on that because I just want to be better in terms of myself, right? So there's, what my point right. is, is there's no point in thinking about all the logistics of it all. The action, you grow within the action. Like, it'll become better. You'll be better at what you do. It's like, you know, you know, you can't learn how to swim without trying to swim. You can't learn how to tie your shoes without actually attempting to do it and a baby shows you how they stand up they fall down until they get how to balance themselves and then they start walking they're not saying i'm gonna learn how to walk so they clap you just end up clapping right that baby tried to stand on its own it said wait a minute they stand and i want to stand yeah or you know on 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 you know what Bonnie expressed, like, it felt good when Boyd did that. It's like, yeah, it did. It felt, you know, awesome. This is something that, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the show. And, you know, but the thing is, it's like, I didn't expect him, you know, to do it. You know, I didn't send it to him with the expectation of, you know, I'm going to send this to him and I want him to take all these pictures and, you know, do this and, you know, say thank you. And it's like, no, I sent it because, you know, um, I wanted to, you know, it was something that we had discussed before, um, and, you know, I did it because I felt the exchange that we had was equal, and it's like I wanted to show him, like, look, thank you for, you know, doing this and, you know, making me a part of it and helping, you know, my own evolution. Um, So that was my, you know, exchange of, you know, showing my thanks for everything that he's done for me and that he continues to do. Um, and like I said, it doesn't come with that, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do this to get this. And like he mentioned before, it's like icing on the cake. You know, it's like cake is good even without, you know, the icing, but when you add that icing on it, it tastes better, you know. Right. So the things that, you know, you do, you know, you do, like he was saying, you do for yourself. You do because you know that it is helping you become a better version of yourself. And so when you do get that recognition, um, you know, and those thank yous and those positives, you know, um, that positive energy back, it's only going to give you more energy to continue on the path that you set. You know, so when it comes, you know, it, it is that icy. You know, it's it's not bad to, to feel good about it. It's actually you're supposed to feel good about it because you feel good about it, you know. So... Right, and that's why I think I was, like, I was comparing it to, like, almost like adrenaline is, like, when I send things to people or I call people and tell them, hey, you know, I've got this to show you or whatever, I already feel good about the fact that I know I did a good job. Because I'm going to be honest with you, if I didn't feel like I did a good job, I wouldn't be giving something to somebody. You know what I mean? I would try again until I thought that it was good enough to, to be given away, if that makes sense. And that's yeah. not really like a self confidence thing. That's a, I'm not going to give you a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not yeah, going to give you something so that I wouldn't give myself yeah. or my friends or, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. this is going to, you know, I worked hard on this. I'm proud of it. And now I'm excited to give it to you because it's going to go, it, I'm giving it bigger purpose by giving it to you, basically. Like, my purpose for doing think, this and, and, and having it and making it. When they don't, 
react the way you thought they would react, though. How does it feel? And you know what? I did people? struggle with that in the beginning. I did. I really did. And I, that's what I was getting at with, like, my podcast and, and talking about, like, people not reciprocating and whatnot. It, I did get stuck for a while where I would be, like, like you, like a deflated balloon where I'm like, oh, God, like, what did, what's wrong? Why didn't they like it? Or, you know... You know what can I what can I do better in a negative way instead of a like formative growing type of way, and so I got to a point where it's like I'm making this for you because I want to and I like to do it, and if you don't like it, then that's okay. You know what I mean? Like whatever, let's move on to the next person or to the next project. It's the next whatever. And you're it's a little bit different with some of my customer, right? And you're creating being, so you're say. only doing what you're supposed to be doing, whether someone else was outside of you to give it to or not. You're a creator being. So you're not doing anything that you wouldn't be doing if there were zero people on the planet. You would be creating by yourself. It's in your nature. You were made in the image of a creator being. Therefore, it's part of your nature naturally to create. So the point is right. to remember that you're going to be creating anyway. Why focus on the reaction? Just create and get lost in creating because you, that's what you're here to do, to grow and create yourself, create things, create your world. And see, that's why the life I think that you want. Right. And I think that's why I ended up taking a step back from the business side of it back in like around Christmas time because I was starting to feel the weight of all of the outside influence and not necessarily people liking or disliking, but I was dealing with really difficult customers and it's like no matter what I did, I couldn't make these people happy. And I was like, I hate this. Like I don't want to do this anymore. I'm like, so something's wrong. Something's wrong with the way I'm doing it because this is something that I love to do. And I stopped. Like I didn't take orders. I didn't fill. Like I didn't do anything for like a month and a half and, I mean, there were some external reasons. I mean, I had surgery and I was sick and blah, 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 blah. But, like, it was, like, perfect timing almost for me to say, okay, I need a break because I'm not enjoying this anymore. And I am not, quote, unquote, in business. Excuse me. Oh, that came out of nowhere. I'm not, I wasn't in business or doing this as a business to be miserable. So if I can't do it and be happy, I'm not going to do it as a business anymore. Like, because I still want to do it, <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's of exactly course. what you were saying, is I just want to create. And I was fortunate enough to be in a position where I didn't feel like I had to make money at it at that point. So I was able to just stop and, like, reevaluate and go, okay, I don't really hate doing this stuff. I hate dealing with X, Y, Z part of it, and I'm going to eliminate that part of it because either way, I – want to keep making things. And if that means I'm making things and I'm giving them away from free, then so be it. Like as long as I'm able to do that or I'm in a position to do that, then that's what I'm going to do. And that's oh. kind of what landed me in the like I want to make things. Now I'm like I'm literally like seeking people out that don't have like there's a producer, for example, that I just made some stuff for, and they're just getting started out, and they don't they had a logo, but they didn't have like somebody doing merchandise for them. I got on his like Instagram live and was like, "Hey, da da da, I kept following him, following him, seeing what he was about, and we talked a little bit, and I said, "I saw you guys have a logo. Do you guys have logo gear? No, we don't. Would you like some? Sure, cool. I just made him a bunch of stuff." To, to send and you know just to say hey here like this can help you get started now I don't I don't own his logo he can take that stuff and go you know wear it or do whatever that he wants with it and then go with somebody completely different to make stuff for them in the future I don't care because it was really cool just to mess with their logo and make stuff you know what I mean like but his reaction to it was like you said was this icing on the cake it was like so super exciting to to get a positive reaction that, like, I want to do even more for them. You know what I mean? Like, and, and just because. And there's, like, there's no, like I said, there's no contract. There's no, I'm not getting anything physical in return. They're not paying me. You know, it was just really cool to connect with somebody who had an appreciation for what I was doing. 
And that's where it stuff starts to get a little tricky, I think, where you were saying before is is feeding off of that, but I don't I don't necessarily feel like it's a negative thing in this way because even if he hadn't, I would still be sending him the stuff and I would still be looking for people to make things with for buy whatever. You know what I mean? Or yeah. for people around here. Or it just happens to be that this is kind of what I specialize in and I like bringing other people's art or incorporating my own art and bringing that to life. Does that make sense? Yeah, you should. Yeah. Does that sound yeah. like it's it right? It, and find the, and <laughs> okay. try to find yeah. the adrenaline in, in creating something that you like. Like, if you like it, you should be able to get that same rush, even if someone else liked it. You see, because we live in right. a, it's a, it's a perception realm, you know, not, everything's not for everybody. So you, it has to start with you. You have to like it. And if you can't get off on something you made just by, like, sitting with it, then, you know, then there's more, there's something else going on because you should be able to like it. And then when someone else likes it, it's just validating what you already felt about it, right? Like, I think like that's when, exactly when, what happened with his project because I did something that we hadn't talked about that was extra. I'm like, oh, this is so super cool. And the, to the point where I made two for my kids, for my little guys. And I'm like, these are super cool. I'm making one for you. I'm making one for you. And I just think it turned out really awesome. And then I sent him pictures and it wasn't for like an hour or two later, but I still thought the ones that my kids were wearing were really cool. And then when he came back and said, oh, I love it. This is going to be perfect for this and this and this and this and this, I was like, I'm, I'm stoked. That's awesome. I'm so happy that what I like, you like, and that you like that idea. But if he hadn't, then, oh, what? well, what was the harm? Like, I was excited. The kids were excited. You know what I mean? Like, it was fun making them. And it just it built built up my, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like my experience, like, because every time I make a new design and put something on something or using the material, like I'm learning from that. So it, it built up my experience-based things that I'm able to work with and do. Yeah. And, and your momentum at and the your same resume. Time. But yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. But like like I said, that, that, that extra, that was just like the extra. And I'm glad you guys put it that way because now I can look at it like that and it helped put my thoughts into words better because that's what I was really struggling with it, when I called in. And and, so and I've been running around with my brain. You, and when you struggle with it too, just always go back to if you, you know, you always wanted to feel this love from somebody else that you had for them. But what it starts with is, if you know, if you love yourself, when someone else outside of you loves you, it's just like icing on the cake, right? It's like, shit, baby, you love me, so do I. But I also love you. So it's like, you know, a lot of times people got it messed up. It's like, I don't like me, so I'm looking for someone else to like me. And that's the oh, problem. Oh, I can definitely like, attest to that. Yeah. You know, like, so it feels so much better when you like you and then someone else pop up and they like you. It's like, damn, you know, and that shows you how things work. It's like once you believe it, it's, it's, then it happens, you know, and then, right. then mm-hmm. it comes outside of you once you believe it. Um, but, Bonnie, we, we do have someone else that has a question and, you know, you know, I can oh, talk oh, to you all, so all night on here. It's all right, <laughs> you know. And if you I'm need, if you ever need, if clock. you ever need, you 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 know, look, you need to know that you've called in and been a part of the show and put your energy on and and have given you know us you know you know back and forth conversation and that's you're you've actually contributed to take the night. You know, if you if you ever need anything, just let me know and I'll do my best to help you. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to catch up with the uh, the Adobe stuff because I need to get on that. <laughs> okay. That we talked about sure. before at some point. But, yeah, um, all right, sure. go ahead, cut me off, and I will talk to you guys hopefully next show. All right. All right, Bonnie. Bonnie. All right, bye. Uh, okay, so uh, 510-4489, what's going on? Hey, this is Ebony. How you doing? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Awesome. I'm doing real well. Good. So, so my question, as well as a comment, was when um, 
when you, as well as when Bonnie was speaking on intentions, and mm-hmm. when you, you know, when you are doing nice things for people or just nice things in general, sometimes the response is not always, you know, the same or receptive. Um, like, for example, um, I always have the intentions of to give people good hospitality. You know, I... I just believe, you know, just treating people how I would want to be treated is if I was in your home. And so, you know, I always had that intention. However, I've recognized that even still having that intention, that people still will use you just for what you are offering. Um, And then pretty much when they feel like they're done, they go about their way and then that's and then that be that. However, I had the intention, I said a good intention just to be, you know, who I am and to treat you as if I would want to be treated. So it's just kinda hard to not feel a certain type of way when initially you go in with a positive intent. But it's yeah. but it's not always receptive. Oh, okay, you she, she, you just brought me somewhere else that didn't even come up <laughs> when Bonnie was talking. Okay, yeah, so it, we it's, it's different. We we believe no, but in terms it's the same. But it, you just brought something up in me. So you believe in um, like your spirit guides, and like you know uh, the ancestors. Something's watching over you. Something is judging all of us by our actions. Remember, the realm gives you what you are, what you vibrate on, not what you think you are, not what you project physically. So the fact that you always have that thing in you that wants to give hospitality, just because that person wasn't able to be recepting of that doesn't mean it wasn't tallied up by what really matters. What really matters is that thing watching all of us that we're not privy to in terms of we can't see it. So you're doing right by what really matters because what most people get caught up in is the reaction out of the people they're doing it for, forgetting that there's a greater thing going on. That's that's that has dominion over this thing that we're playing down here on Earth. So your judgments are coming from the people day to day as much as they are coming from that thing when you know that's 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 over it all. So you know I would I I always remember that I'm being watched not by you know you or Angelica but something far greater. So even if this physical person in front of me doesn't appreciate my actions, if my if I know I, my my intention was rooted well because that's the thing that gets picked up, not what you your your action just from that hollow perspective, but it's a tele thing that's going on in this realm, a sensory thing going on in this realm. So so who you are in your core is being tallied up. So that's enough for me in situations like that because people walks of life have them valuing different things. Some people only value green paper money. Some people value antiques. Some people value gifts that somebody made. Some people value horses. Some people have value horses. Some people value dogs. Uh-huh. So, and uh, go ahead. So, be, so understanding that, you know, your gesture is being appreciated and it's from a higher power if you believe in one if you you know that's a I don't know but it is there is there see they do a good job of making people think there's no judgment in the realm from a higher power in a sense to where you know your heart is being weighed on the scale so something is watching you watching all of us so so you know it's being picked up these people around us are projections that tend to have too much power over us in the sense to where, you know, we can make them something and they can act away and now we're feeling down. But it's like, look, 
just know they're, they're, they're a person working on themselves, trying to grow. They may get it this time around. It may take them the next time around. But just do, still do it. Still have that intent. Don't let it harden you and numb you to become a person that doesn't act like that anymore, doesn't give and be pure like that just because you're not getting the reaction that you see. You, you, you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. And to add to that, like Boyd has said earlier, you know, people are, are I want to say, you know, people only react based off of their own experiences. So if somebody's never, ever experienced, you know, true, you know, gratitude and wanting to help without expectations, they're not going to know how to respond. They're going to go to their default and, you know, respond according to their own experiences. And a lot of people's experiences today are, you know, they're just trying to get something from me. They don't really mean this. You know, they're not real. So a lot of the time it is that negative uh, type of reaction, but also it does have to do with, you know, a person being upset that they themselves can't give without expectation. So, you know, it, it's it's like we were saying um, earlier, it's like, you know, people who comment on things or say something to other people in judgment are really judging themselves. So if somebody is, you know, if you're giving genuinely from your heart without expectations and treating people a certain way, and that's how you really are, some people may take that, you know, in a negative way because they themselves are not like that and they really want to be, but they don't know how. And because of their own experiences in growing up in an environment that doesn't promote, you know, giving from the heart and, you know, with love, um, they won't understand it. They won't know what to do with it. They will fear it and ridicule it, just as the society has taught them to do. You know, so I agree with what Boyd says. Is like keep on doing, you know, giving from your heart, but also understand, like we were talking about earlier, it's like not everybody deserves what you get, so you need to set uh-huh. those boundaries. And it's like That's if you keep on getting the same type of reaction from somebody, then your energy shouldn't go there. You know, right. you shouldn't continue to give that to that person because they're not reciprocated. They don't understand. So why should you keep on giving it to them if they're not going to use it, if they don't understand it or they don't want to understand it? So it's like, okay, cool, I'm just going to go over to them then, you know, and, and limit the interactions or the type of energy that I give you because you're not, you know, on that level to understand where it's coming from. So, exactly. you know. Don't, you know, it, it's, it's, it's that whole, you know, kind of like seeing the bigger picture. And it's like you know where you're coming from, what your intent is, but you don't know what everybody else's intent is. And that's why we have to be aware and really trust our intuition and saying, okay, I did, you know, and, and really, you know, analyzing the energy and the feelings that you're getting for some, from somebody because, those feelings of, like, resentment or, you know, hostility is not from you if you understand your own energy. So it's like if you're feeling that when you know you're coming from a genuine place of love, then that's not you. That's the other person trying to reflect that energy on you. So it's like, like, voices just keep it going. Like, you know, whatever. It's like that's not, those aren't my feelings. Those aren't my energy that I'm putting out. So I don't need to reflect that back to that person or continue to give this, you know, love energy when they just keep on giving me class. It's like, but what you can do is you can transform it and walk away, you know, and, Uh you know, just do something totally different and not, you know, uh, give them something that they're not going to appreciate. And that goes all back to, you know, knowing your value, knowing your worth and, you know, your energy and putting it into uh, things and environments and people that promote that growth. Exactly. Yeah, it, and, it, and if you're giving hospitality you know, to somebody and they don't respect your hospitality, they shouldn't be in your house. Exactly. And and, and they they don't. And they don't. I've done a lot of detaching. It's just hard not to feel a certain way because, for one, I have a heart too. Mm -hmm. You know. Exactly. And give it to people who also have a heart that that appreciate all that you do. And then, you know, you get Mm -hmm. that thing that's missing just naturally. Mm hmm. Right. We yeah. we tend to give it to the people who don't appreciate it. It's something's 
it seems like it's part of the human condition. We we want to give to the people or the attention from the people who they don't want. They they're not they're not interested. You know, they're preoccupied. And it's a matter of redirecting that and realizing who who really is a value to our lives. It's like, you know, every movie where there's a love story, that person is always overlooking the person that's perfect for them and going after the person that that really doesn't care and isn't for them, that isn't perfect for them, that isn't going to be good for them. It's that vanity thing. And then the person that they should be with, that they end up being with, is the best friend that they always overlooked or something. It's, that story is being told over and over again every year for a reason, because it's something that continues to happen. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, just, like I was you just, you know, continue, like Boyd would say, continue to, to give, you know, but also, you know, don't put your, your energy into places and things that aren't reciprocating. You know, exactly. sometimes that does mean, you know, you have to uh, let go of certain things, not be in certain environments and stuff like that, and that's okay. Yeah, it's a process to, to you know, have to deal with it because that means you're changing, you know, your routine and the people and things that are around you, and that takes adjusting, you know, but that is part of the process. And like we were saying earlier, you know, when you remove certain things and, you know, blockages, you open other things and you, and you make room for those things that are going to be of benefit to you. So it's mm-hmm. it's all going to be, you know, how it should be and how you intend it to be. And that's why it's important to, you know, set your intentions and, and put that out there so that you're continually putting that energy out and vibrating on that level so you can attract that. And everything else that isn't, made for you or made for your higher growth and your intentions, they fade away. You start to feel a certain way about them or you get these, you know, feelings that are taking you away or, like Boy said, distracting you from um, your your intentions. You know, they bring you to a low vibrating state. You know, they make you frustrated. They make you angry. You feel drained. And it's like that's not who you are. And, you, and, you know, you know that. So it's like I have to remove myself from this situation and and not be around it because it's not helping me. All right. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 a task, believe me. And a lot of people um are going through that, especially with dealing with the heart because, you know, it is where our deep emotions, you know, come from. You know, not the physical heart like Boyd was pointing out, but our energetic heart. And, you know, a lot of people are getting back into that. I don't want to say back into that, but it's starting to come up a lot now because people are, you know, getting over or being able to look past these physical things, you know, and get into our emotional, energetic selves and figuring out, you know, how and what best suits their own individual happiness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is all a process, and it does take, I mean, it takes time. It, it takes lifetimes. I mean, every single day we, we learn, you know, how to balance ourselves, you know, and deal with certain things, you know, and grow from it. So it's, it's a journey, I will say that. Mm-hmm. Boyd, are you still there? I am here. You know, <laughs> you know, I'll be. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. You know, you know, we've actually gone. Um, I think we're like close to three hours tonight. I think we reached our match to see how far we could push this thing. Which yeah. is interesting. Yeah, we're pushing like hour three, but yeah, yeah. Um, so. Right, you should give out your info so people can get in contact yeah, yeah, with yeah. you. Um, yes, you can find me on social media. That is Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Serenity CMD. My website is www.serenitycmd.com. 
My email is angel at serenitycmd.com. Yeah, hit Angelica up. This lady understands things. You know, me and her, we, we've gone oh, wait, through wait, our wait, own wait, little wait. thing. But but wait a minute. I don't know magic. I don't do magic. <laughs> no. Nah. Right? No. Nah. <laughs> hey, Ebony. Ebony, thanks for calling in, okay? Thanks, Ebony. Love you. Ebony, okay? thank you for calling in. Thank you. We appreciate you. Likewise. Um. <laughs> Uh, what was I? What was I about to say? <laughs> um, no, no. What I was saying is, is, yeah, no. Hit her up. She does understand. You know, me and Angelica, we have talks and stuff like that. And she surprised the hell out of me because I asked her the other day. I was like, so you know what I'm talking about? Just say it back to me. And she said it. And the only thing that I could, the only thing I said was, yeah, you you said that perfect. It couldn't. I could. You know, hey. Yeah, I couldn't even say anything. So just, you know, hit her up. She's cool people, and um, she's a friend of mine, and I, I like her vibes. You can uh, contact me on uh, Facebook at it simply – oh, no. Facebook at Boyd the Boyd. That's Boyd and last name, the Boyd. Uh, on Instagram, it's at Simply Boyd. On uh, YouTube, it's it's Simply Boyd. And uh, Twitter is a simply boy, but it seems nobody really uses Twitter. So, hey, if you do, you can hit me up on there. Uh, the show's email is take the night radio at gmail.com. That's take the night radio at gmail.com. And we have a Facebook page, which is at take the night radio. And you can also find the uh, show's YouTube, which if you put in Take the Night and have it to where it searches for pages, our, the YouTube page will come up. And all our previous shows are posted on YouTube also, so you could play them back on there as well. And, yeah, um, thank you for listening to Take the Night. And, you know, go back, you know, go back and get it. Like, like I said, like the Sankofa symbol, go back to the heart, get out of the head, go back to the heart, It'll do you, uh, uh, it's an individual thing. It'll do you a service, and it'll be good for you and your own individual path. And I feel like you'd be better off for it, and I'm sure you would be better off for it also. So thank you for watching or listening with us tonight, and we'll be back on Monday. And, yeah, got anything to say, Angelica, in closing? Uh, stay awesome. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. I'll take the night, 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 I'll take the night,